They gotta grow up sometime. Come on. All right. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you, Matt. Good evening. This is the Mayor and Council Brainer Work Session. Today is June 6th. It's Tuesday, June 6th, and we're starting this meeting at 7 or 3 p.m. And this meeting is being held in person, and residents can view this meeting via Comcast Channel 71, Verizon Channel 36, and YouTube Live at Brainwood MD. For public comments during the meeting, please email info at Brainwood MD. And with that, I will have Mr. Moran to call the roll. All right. Councilmember Kiana Taylor. Present. Councilmember Lauren Roke. Present. Councilmember Marcus Monroe. Present. Vice Mayor Stefan Legging. Present. Mayor Rocio. Present. Town Administrator, Mr. Gaston. Present. Police Chief Calvin Washington. Present, sir. Treasurer, Ms. Shelley Dorsey. She's excused. Absent. Town Clerk, Larry Moran. Present. Okay. Town Attorney. He is excused. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I going to move to this agenda. Hopefully we have all the documents, but first we have some visitors today and I would like to open this meeting and introducing, uh, what's the church now, Ms. Kian? E Ecclesia International. Ecclesia International on 37th Street. And I will open the floor for public comments. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, members of council and staff. My name is Elder Joyce Washington and I am here this evening along with fellow Ecclesia International members, Dr. Sharon Holmes and Elder Vanessa Chambers. We're here on behalf of Dr. Stephanie Stratford. Uh, she is the presiding bishop and lead pastor of, of Ecclesia International and we're also here on the behalf of Ecclesia Church. We're here by the invitation of Councilwoman Taylor, who graciously invited us to attend this, night, this evening's meeting to speak for a few moments about the purpose of our recent request for temporary street closure for the block of the church location, which is 4205 37th Street here in Brentwood, Maryland. Uh, where our purpose for requesting the street closure is for an upcoming event that Ecclesia is planning to host next month, Saturday, July 29th. It will begin at 3 p.m. and will conclude around 7 p.m. This extravaganza will include a tent revival, prayer station, flea market, distribution of free books and book, book bags and school supplies for the children in the Brentwood area when they return to school. Ecclesia's goal is to extend its reach farther than it has in the past within the Brentwood community to help and assist with the meetings, I'm sorry, to help and assist with meeting with some of the needs of the community. Our first step is to honor our commitment, which is by hosting this event. And again, that event includes the tent revival. Just to give you a brief description, um, our purpose for that is creating an environment of peace and the love of God and a safe place, a place where we will share the word of God, a place where we can share and show the love of Christ with one another. Ecclesia has the desire to love on these individuals with the love of the Lord, and we also uh, are here to uh, to assist uh, those that uh, may be in a state of uh, a feeling of discouraged or may be feeling unloved and unwanted or just feeling alone. Um, another part of um, our event will be a prayer station. That will be a place of prayer where we will pray with people in their time of need. We will meet with people right where they are. Uh, we are there to pray with them uh, for the nourishment of their mind, heart, and spirit. We will pray with these people who will be facing growing difficulties and challenges, who may be facing the weight or the impact of fear, uh, the weight of uncertainties in life, or who may just feel overwhelmed just by life alone. In turn, we, Ecclesia, want to address and meet these needs by offering prayers, speaking words of encouragement and support again, for the mind, body, and spirit of the individual. 
The next event will be our flea market. We're aware that we're dealing with hard times now. Um, we're dealing with people that are dealing with probably financial crisis or different types of situations wherein they may not have the simple privilege of just basic clothing. Uh, we will be selling new and used clothing, shoes, and possibly other items for men, women, women and children. The price of the items will start at between five and probably go to possibly $20. We realize the importance and the impact of, of the insufficient and uh, indecent uh, clothing that people may have. And because of that, it may put them in a state of <coughs> insecurity. Uh, it may affect their self-esteem. Uh, it just may affect just how they feel about themselves as a whole. And again, we would like to address and, and meet with them and help them in any way possible that we can. Um, the next item we will be doing is we will be uh, distributing uh, the books and books bags to the children uh, before they return to school, and that will be free. And finally, I'd like to mention we have an upcoming church event. It's a free vacation Bible study. Uh, it's for children the ages of 5 to 16. It will be from June 28th to June 30th. Uh, the time for each day will be 9 a.m. to 3.15. Uh, the activities will include arts and crafts, field trip, possibly the Bible Museum, uh, safety instruction, board games, fun games, cookouts, nature walks, exercising, nutrition sessions, and Bible study. And again, this is free. Uh, registration application deadline is June 14th, and this event will be held at Ecclesia. And again, the address is 4205 37th Street in Brentwood, Maryland. Thank you. I have a quick question, if I may. Thank you for coming out today. And I love the holistic approach you're sort of taking towards the whole community, which is wonderful. Um, so the events will be from 3 to 7. The closing that you need is from 11 to 8. Is that, am I speaking correctly? Yes. And sort of as a sidebar, because I walk by and I hear the beautiful music playing and I love it. Mm -hmm. will, will there be any outdoor music and has there been any consideration to how that will impact the houses that are immediately around there? Uh, we're in still in the planning stages of that. Okay. Um, if that would be an issue, we would definitely be considerate of the pe in, within the neighborhood. So we don't want to uh, make anything uncomfortable for anyone or cause any type of disruption. Yeah, I think as long as we're just cognizant of that, I sure, think we'll absolutely. be in good shape. Yeah, absolutely. You That's wonderful. That. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No. Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Uh, I just have one quick question. Yes. There was a, uh, recently there was another pastor that came requesting. Is that from the same uh, church? There was a, uh, um, I, I think I saw him. He is using a church, but I cannot remember which one on 37th Street, but he was a, a Hispanic pastor. And we asked, oh, he was asking. Yeah. Uh, we were here a couple of weeks ago. Probably. I don't remember. I, I didn't take his application. Building. In the same building. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I just want to know the vacation Bible school that she mentioned. Is it too late for you guys to put that in your newsletter? For June? For the neighborhood? For July? For, uh, for, for June, July. yes. For July, no. Okay. You just need to send us the information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can just be excused. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Our town administrator, Mr. Gaston, will circle back with you ladies. Yep. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming tonight. Thank you. Enjoy your night. All right. One night on this. Any other public comments? No public comments. All right. Follow the. Do you have public comments? Do you have 
asked them to present it, and he said they were going to discuss it, so I'm hoping it's not, I don't know how you're going to present it. So that's why I'm, I'm not saying it anymore. Okay. But thank you for that very much. Yes, all right. All right. Well, next item in the, in the agenda is the recondition of the Council Rules, Resolution 2023-07. Sorry. So, Mayor, were they, I didn't have them listed out in my documents. The print, the print out of the rules, I don't think they were printed out for us. We may need Did to put it on the screen. Did you send it to Larry? Did you copy it? Oh, six. That's the number yeah, so it was the one I forwarded to you and the town administrator. It says council rules on that email, and it basically was forwarding council members' mm -hmm. comments. Okay. Do we want to circle back to that one? Yes, can you find that? Um, okay, so let me move to the next item while we are waiting for that information. Shrubs and trees ordinance, and that is vice mayor. That's me. Yes, I think. So, <laughs> if you guys will indulge me, let me let me go through the presentation in a little less rushed fashion. Which yes, one sir. do you want to do first? The code request or the ordinance? This one here. The one that says like code request, yeah. Because we rushed through it because we were having such a quick, quick yes. I had a meeting or a long meeting last time. It is here. And I think just discussing the presentation will inform our our discussion after. Did you? I worked really this? hard on it. It's up. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You need Matt, to send the can information you share the, oh, so they can be it put it in the prop, appropriate format. She, okay. she, I did. Yeah. Send it. She did. Yeah. Okay. And it was approved by Jason and everything. So. What was the demo? The resolution 2023 06. I'm just saying that it's not in the proper, on the same. Format that would because it's not final yet, or it's not. Uh, this is the first discussion of it. It's different than this. Does it still need to be in a form in that format? Correct. Always. Oh, then we can do this. Okay. I just I can do this. No problem. Always. I'm sorry. All right. So we're looking for uh, 2023-07. That's it. You have to circle back to that. So it's not ready. You don't have it. <laughs> Mr. Gaston, you have that one. Which one? That's in this? Mm -mm. No. Oh, it's no. not in there. Okay. That's the meeting rules. No, this is. No, no, no. We're looking for the meeting rules. We're looking for the meeting rules. Um, I'm sending it again right now. Okay. Mm. I don't think I saw it in the original like email that had all the meeting documents. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was part of that. No. Um, what are you saying? Do you want to talk about? Like no. the one that was sent out. It wasn't that in there, but I did. You sent it on Friday. <clears throat> right, and this yeah. was, sorry. The only thing We're I talking. have is from May. Um, is, is there any changes done to this one? Because I have one from May 7, May 8, that the town administrator sent. She, yeah, she provided several okay. comments in the document. I okay. think that was part of the confusion, Mayor, was that mm -hmm. um, she has some markups. They, they weren't available at the previous work session, so we tabled it. And then we send it um, for addition to the agenda for this meeting. It's just for general purpose for future, Mr. <coughs> Gaston and Larry. Everything has to be attached to the agenda. Everything that they sent to us, so that way we don't have to be delaying the process. So I'm just going to go to Shrubs and Trees Ordinance while we find those. I have a resolution. Let's come back to it anytime. Are you gonna email it to us too? I can, please. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the resolution yet. He has it, but since it has to be printed, we should just move, move to the move next. Forward. Um, thirty-eight place. Shrubs and trees. Shrubs and trees. Shrubs and trees. Shrubs okay. and trees. No, no, that's what I'm asking. Do we have that ordinance? Yes. We yes. On the that last that's the one. Page okay. Of um, this little handout. This is it's a rough copy. The one. This one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the one with the yeah. pictures. So on the other right one. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. I think I saw that. 
Okay. This also might not be in the format. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the work session, so yeah. I don't think yeah. we need to oh, add okay. it to like a oh. specific book. The ordinance, yes. The resolution. We need to have a discussion about it, though, mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. That might need some editing. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. This sure. is work session. Okay. Let's work it. Yep. Trees and shrubs. Trees and shrubs. <laughs> Trees and shrubs. <laughs> so, of course, we like decided that we need to have some work done to our code regarding mm -hmm. trees and shrubs as a result of our traffic meeting, yeah. traffic safety, safety meeting, safety yes. meeting, public safety, public safety meeting, because um, it's so much more than just traffic. Um, and so the first page of your presentation identifies just four corners, which are very easy to find, in which shrubs or trees are obscuring clean sight lines. Some of those trees and shrubs are directly on corners. Um, some of those trees and shrubs are along busy roadways. Um, I think the best two illustrations are your top two pictures where you can't see the other car at the stop sign. And then the bottom pictures sort of show how you can't see cars approaching the intersection along the sight lines. So, of course, our goal is to maintain clear sight lines of vision at intersections and to protect the safety and welfare of the public. So, um, being one that never likes to do any work himself, I looked around and pulled some code from other places. Um, Prince George's County has code related to um, fences in which they say no visual obstruction more than three feet high uh, shall be located within an intersection um, about 25 <coughs> feet from the corner. Um, and we see that a lot with the fences that we have here in Brentwood. Um, in Brentwood, we allow fences up to four feet, but we also have already existing in the, in the code something specific to shrubs. It says it's going to be unlawful to construct, erect, or modify um, any fence that, I'm sorry, any fence that encroaches upon a public right of way. Um, so there's some sort of like talk to it. Um, and so there's obviously some discussion between the county and between us, or there's some agreement between the county and between us that like fences should not interfere with our sight lines. So of course the next question is what's, difference, what's the difference between hedges and fences? Um, so then I looked to our neighbors to see what they're doing. Um, Tacoma Park says that um, vegetation taller than three feet will not be allowed within 20 feet of an intersection. Um, Hyattsville says that no hedge bordering any public sidewalk or path should be more than four feet, which is more in keeping with what our current code is for fences. And then Riverdale, um, they go back down to that three feet level where they say any um, shrub or hedge along a sidewalk or public path can't be more than three feet. Um, and they also say that um, at intersections, this is section B, um, that everything has to be clear within 25 feet of the intersection. And so if we go to page, Mr. Gaston, if you don't mind, one, two, three, four, we have two illustrations. At the top is a perfect world, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's easy to measure. Mm, one more, sir. And then the bottom illustration is not the perfect world, that's the world we live in. Um, and that's the intersection, of course, of Varnum, Volta, and 38th Street. So the question is, what works for Brentwood? Um, so, I, what I basically did is I blended all of these resolutions, I'm sorry, all these ordinances from our neighbors together to create what is the last page after all the whereases. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess in the interest of, of doing this correctly, because I think Mr. or our attorney would ask me to, um, should I read everything including <coughs> the whereases for discussion or is that not necessary? Uh, are you going to introduce? Mr. Gaston is saying yes. Are you gonna? This is my question. Are you going to introduce this amendment to the ordinance? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I would like to introduce um, and to the, an yes. ordinance establishing an amendment to the Brentwood Code, six, six, adding. Um, you know, this would be Ordinance twenty twenty three zero two, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. Uh, give me a minute. How many ordinances have we done this year? A couple. Give me mm -hmm. a second. Ordinance. Yeah, Only one. Your I resolutions, I believe. I thought we did thinking. one ordinance for like police. Mm -hmm. We did the, uh, this. And I, I take that back. The right. budget. This is three. Yeah, you're right. This is twenty three oh two. I mean, oh three. Twenty three oh three. Oh three. Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so this would be Town of Brentwood Ordinance twenty twenty three oh three, an ordinance establishing an amendment to the Brentwood Code, adding G H I and J to Section two Code of Subsection seven of Section forty four, brush grass and weeds. Whereas the life and health of, ta of the town of Brentwood's residents are our utmost priority, and whereas traffic crashes are among the leading causes of death and injury within the United States and the state of Maryland, mm -hmm. 
And whereas traffic deaths and serious injuries in the United States have disproportionately impacted pedestrians, cyclists, people of color, low-income households, older adults and youth, people with disabilities and households with limited vehicular access, and whereas it is the express interest of this town to avoid preventable accidents and deaths by maintaining clear lines of vision at intersections for pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists, now therefore be it ordained by the mayor and council of the town of Brentwood that chapter 447, section two of the Brentwood Code is amended as follows. G. No person may maintain or allow to exist on their property which they own or which is in their possession of uh, or control of trees, shrubs, hedges, or other vegetation or projecting overhanging limbs thereof, which obstruct the view necessary for safe operation of motor vehicles or otherwise cause danger to the public in the use of town streets. It shall be the duty of the person who owns, possesses, or controls the property to remove or trim and keep trimmed any obstructions to the view. And you'll notice this gets like general and it gets more specific as it goes on. H, no hedge boarding within three feet of any public sidewalk, public street, or public path may grow to a height of more than three feet, measured from the surface of the sidewalk grade or path. A clear vision, I'm sorry, I, a clear vision area shall be maintained on the corners of all property adjacent to an intersection. The clear vision area for all corner lots shall be that area within 25 feet of the corner of a property located at an intersection of two streets. And J, a clear vision area shall contain no planting, fence, wall, structure, or temporary or permanent obstruction, except for a utility pole, except when the height of the obstruction does not exceed three feet in height, measured from the top of the curb or where no curb exists from the street line center grade. Trees exceeding this height may be located in this area, provided all branches and foliage are removed to the height of eight feet above the grade. So that would be the proposed amendment. Um, and what it would live inside is the last ordinance we passed, which was back in 2018. Mm -hmm. I believe Council Member Burgess led the effort on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would be nestled in section two, which um, if you look, I think Mr. Gaston printed this out for everyone. It would be, you see section two code already has A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. So we would just add the G, the H, the I, and the J. I thought it would be section seven. Instead of two. Mm -hmm. oh. Subsection seven. Sub -sub -sub subsection seven. seven. This is. Well, this is subsection seven. Mm, okay. Right? And then it's section, so section, section two, two within then, subsection okay. seven. Yeah. If that makes sense. Is that correct? And yeah. And a partridge in a pear tree. Right. <laughs> All right. See, that was like, oh man, of all the days for Attorney Deloach not to be here to hold it. Yeah, yes. But yeah, he was saying it like that. Just um, yes. That, I mean, I it makes sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so let's talk about it. Yes. To discuss. I am not married to any of us. Just want to get it on paper. So, so I had two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, currently, you can have a fence um, up to four feet. So, would we be willing to reconsider allowing? shrubbery to exist at that same height because this says three makes sense to me yeah so it, mm -hmm. that would be more consistent with our current code yes right? mm -hmm. yep question on that though um fences are maybe that height but they're not necessarily uh within three feet right which is uh where is that that was section j oh h mm-hmm H. So on the back page it says no hedge bordering within three feet of any public sidewalk. So are fences within three feet of a public sidewalk? Is that already allowed? Mm -hmm. You have the sidewalk and then you have the fence line and then the property starts. Mm -hmm. so, I, so it reads to me or not it reads to me but I'm going to say yes but I may be wrong. Yeah. Well, easement of the property uh, is the right of way of the town. Sidewalk all the way up to the curb. So you were asking about the, the, other direction. the other direction towards the property owner's home. That part we can't infringe upon. The only thing we can do is set the limit at four feet or whatever. But um, we can't 
restrict them to move, you know, to, to make a, make them move their fences back uh, no, 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 no. at sure. that. Cause I, I, that's what I was trying to understand. Well, that's something for discussion eventually, because if you look, especially the corner of 37 and window, that does, that, uh, that piece of sidewalk there is not in compliance with AD, ADA. Like, for instance, is I that, know it's the corner house we're talking about. So, is that how does that factor into this ordinance, though? No, because you know, you're saying that uh, we need to put the, uh, <laughs> in the microphone. Mm -hmm. How does that play into this ordinance? No, uh, because you're saying about moving the fence. No, no, I was just making sure. Yeah, I, I didn't understand. No, okay. I didn't under. I, but you are impossible. Tell me how. So, page. Three, Riverdale, Maryland. Permit, so it will be unlawful to permit any hedge or shrubbery within three feet. So you've got your curb, your public sidewalk, and then three feet. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're not permitted, it's unlawful <coughs> to grow a hedge or shrubbery within three feet of any sidewalk, more than three feet. So what you're saying is, so will there be an exception for fences, but then that goes counter to I think no, what, no, no. what the intention is, which is to provide sight line whether you're at an intersection or you're on a sidewalk. So then you would have to move fences. What I was or, saying is, mm -hmm. so the way the fence lines are currently in existence, mm -hmm. in the front yard we allow fences to go up to four feet, in backyards we allow them to go up to six feet. Height. In height. If we allow fences in the front yard to go up to four feet, do we feel comfortable allowing shrubs to rest at that same height? So not moving the fence line in any direction, but do we feel comfortable letting the shrubs grow up to four feet since the fences are allowed to, to come up to four feet? As opposed to saying you have to cut it down to three. So was my question. My question <coughs> would be, where does three feet come from? Like, where does Riverdale get three feet? I believe the county. county. That's yes. a county law? So, oh, sorry, Mayor, can I jump in on that? Yes. Please. So, and, and this was the both answer your question and tie into your comment. I think I like the three feet simply just because the county already is saying mm -hmm. keep obstructions at three feet. And so for a person with a small child, I'm trying to get those obstructions mm -hmm. as low as possible within reason. So. The reason why I don't like the four feet is that like most small children are under four feet and then when you come into those corners, especially our, our weirdly shaped corners that is, you really have to pull up to the edge of the street uh, intersection to kind of look around and see. When those kids are kind of darting out in front of you, that's why I would like to still maintain that hedge height to be as low as possible. So I'm, I'm open to the discussion, but I like the three feet personally but just for that reason. Would you withdraw intersections and just stick to sidewalks? Do you want them at four feet? Because this is intersections mm -hmm. are going to have a 25 foot clearance, like whatever's there. If it's your fence or your shrub or just shrubbery, all just of it, all of it has to be at a level of three within feet. 25 feet, except mm -hmm. for trees that happen to be really tall. Correct. Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about sidewalks, which is <gasps> public sidewalk or public path. So I was only talking about the issue of whether we allow the fence um, line to match the hedge sidewalk. height at intersections okay. right and so I'm, I'm speaking specifically to that so when you come to those intersection and we do allow for four feet fences and to your point should the hedges be allowed to come to the height of the, the fence I still argue to keep it lower than that because I'm trying to give as much visibility as we can at those intersections, intersections. just for that reason and I think the I mean even though we allow four feet I t I think most of the feet most of the fences in Brentwood are three feet because mm -hmm. the county only allows three feet and you gotta get your county permit before you come to Brentwood. Mm -hmm. So if anyone wants a four foot fence, they have to, they have to ask for an exemption from the right. county. So I think in, in all practicality, yeah, most of the fences are three feet as it is. Right. So, um, and I, you know, I, I wish I, I had your insight. Like I wasn't even thinking about kids, you know, to be quite frank and like yeah. three feet does make more sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess, you know. Um, I'm good. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. It, that was just my point on it. Just trying to think through the height, the height issue. But in the, the spirit of the ordinance, I love. So that, that was my only thing that I'm thinking of. Otherwise, I don't have any any comments. 
my second question, if I may, if we're done with this question. Mm -hmm. One of the pictures on the front that you provided is um, 37th and Taylor. Actually, I, so this is actually mm -hmm. on 38th, right? Mm -hmm. 38th mm -hmm. and Taylor. Yeah. It said 38th and Taylor, but mm -hmm. it, the address is on the 3700 block. Those have since been trimmed to a height of eight feet. And we're good with that. Because they rest right on the. They sure do. They're right. They sure so do. So that so I mentioned this house specifically mm -hmm. to say, if there is a home that has um, trees at the corner, for mm -hmm. example, I want to say this one over here at mm -hmm. uh, Upshur. Okay. And they have to take their tree down. No. How do we or trim it back? They How? have to trim it so that like at eight feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you've got a tree on the corner that you love, mm -hmm. you just need to clear the branches up to eight feet. Mm -hmm. I guess Mike, I please remember. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to. So if you've got a tree that's on the corner, you have to clear the branches up to eight feet. I guess my question is, if we're requiring that shrubs stop at three feet, mm -hmm. if it's at the corner, mm -hmm. why would we allow a tree to sit at eight feet? Because it's the sight line, so you want to be able to see. But if it's right at the corner, and you want to does be able it matter? To see this, but the tree won't. The tree trunk would go like this, right? And then it would start at eight feet with its tree leaves. Right. It's right. the visibility you can see around a tree trunk because a tree trunk isn't. You have to. Okay. You have to cut. Mm -hmm, you have to mm -hmm, prune mm -hmm. all the way up to eight. Feet. I got what you're saying. Yeah. And yes. Okay. That answers my question. And I could. I mean, I could see some. I mean, I. I once I wrote this, I started looking everywhere and I'm like, man, there's a lot of stuff at the corners. Um, mm -hmm. And I think some people, you know, they already have bushes and they have trees right behind the bushes. Mm -hmm. They just need to lower the bush and raise the tree. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's, mm -hmm. that's the issue that's with this, that house in particular. Because you, you really do have to pull pretty far out into the intersection to see if you can mm -hmm. uh, turn or go straight. So, okay, that answers my question. Uh, my question relates to that corner house on 38. So the house is facing Taylor, and supposedly that 38 is her um, will be allowed for six foot fence if they require. So what's going to happen with the trees that they have planted Wait. there? Because that uh, impairs your 37, 16 Taylor. Yes. But when you go, uh, let's say you you have to make a. Um, I mean, the incoming traffic, obviously, you're going to see from the other side, but it's still you cannot see what's the incoming traffic because of the big trees that are there. If I may. If you're making the stop on Taylor, but you going said to that those eight. trees have been trimmed. They have up to more than eight feet, probably. Right. I wanted to jump in. Uh, Public Works has trimmed both of those trees on their property all the way up to eight feet. So it is a complete example of what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Eight feet up is clear then um okay okay I and it's already it. been trimmed okay. so mm -hmm. if you want to see what it's going to look like go down taylor mm -hmm. get the 38th and look to the and right to you the didn't used to be able to see all the way to the, okay yeah. but now you can see all the way to the apartments okay. yeah i apologize because i probably should have taken an after shot since this is the before shot well i can okay. we i can pull up on my phone <laughs> <laughs> but no uh public works um, and mr well mr gas going back same request i have done to do that on 38 place and window with those big trees because it's blocking the view. Thirty eighth place and when right, no, uh, she's yes. but she um, she. Tr Those trees are on our um, property, town's property. Okay. They're not inside. All right, I'll, we'll look. They're outside. <laughs> so I mean, I'm okay with the ordinance. I um, think looking at it, actually, we should strike the word fence from subsection J. So we don't get people confused. Because if we're, because if we, until we change the code for fence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we can just strike the fence from J, and that way, it, it has to do with. Actually, maybe we should strike fence, and wall, and structure. I'm looking at your your best practice information. Riverdale says, hedge wall. Terrace, structure, shrubbery, planting, or other obstruction. Okay. And that's in compliance with the county, right? Does it, it doesn't have say fence? fence. Nope. Okay, it so say we'll fence. just take the fence out. I don't, yeah. So 
There was a lot of copying and pasting that went Wall structural or temporary or permanent obstruction is what we're keeping and we're getting rid of fence? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. And are we okay with three feet for section H and J? Three feet, yeah. I'm good with that. So going back to my question, for people who have to trim back their trees, if, if it creates a, a financial burden, how do we help to remediate the issue since we are now changing the code to require that they do this work to their property or be cited and get citations? Oh, Mayor, can I jump in? So, uh, it's a good question. It's I'm gonna tie in two things. One is I've been thinking about post ARPA and ARPA in general, the work we've been doing to help the seniors out. One thing we did here is that some folks need help with yard work, like simple things like that, getting a contractor out. And this could probably become an issue that sort of brings that topic up to the forefront again. So we could look at, and this could be another work session discussion, but ways to create a program around here that give assistance to folks for yard work. And I don't know what that would look like as a part of this effort but um, and how much ARPA funds we have left but there could be a spitball in here but just a, a contractor program where we have some vetted folks go out and assist with yard work for those that don't have the means to do it um, I would <clears throat> I would wonder how much hey how are you hey, um, I would wonder how much if we could and of course this would be in consultation with our town administrator whether public works could be put in service of perhaps the half dozen or so seniors who would need that type of assistance. Right. Um, you know, and if that incurs over time, perhaps we could use some ARPA funds for that. I think we might yeah. end up spending a lot less money that way than hiring um, a contractor. Just have a question on, on regard to that. Um, how often, because I can give a prime example, recently my neighbor, they cut the trees, the shrubs around it, right. but with all the rain, they're up again. So how often are we gonna be cleaning or providing those services to the same household. That's another thing. It would be a one-time thing, right? So we're gonna correct the issue for you because that's a lot of upfront costs, mm -hmm. but maintenance costs, just like maintaining a house or maintaining a yard, is the responsibility of the homeowner, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think that's reasonable to, to expect. That, that, that would be we, should we should also consider looping in Jason just to find out the liabilities if one of the guys gets hurt on somebody's private property, trimming back a tree. Um, just to make sure that everybody is protected. Right. Great idea. All right. So. And then th there's, uh, and sorry, I don't know, I haven't been to MML yet. I will learn when I get there. <coughs> but there's a public, uh, for educational purposes, just to inform people that this is happening to, hey, get ready. There's, you're going to. Well, this is the first okay. uh, reading. This is the actual introduction. Option. but after that we have to have a second reading and a hearing yeah. because it's an ordinance so that's how we're going to communicate the residents that and we're going to publicize that this ordinance is like probably we're not going to be uh, adopting this until mid-july sounds good just following the uh the schedule so we have to have a hearing right. before anything and even once we approve it, there's still a 30-day period where yeah. if they if residents wanted to contest it. But I think that putting these ideas into the document, coming back on the second reading, um, doing the public hearing, and maybe just like mm, maybe some education around why we're doing it. You know that part the education part in addition to reading this so i think this is a great education piece right here mm -hmm. so if we just if we, if we <laughs> you know jazz up the the ordinance with our changes that we talked about today and then post it on the website right. and then have a link into the news you can use right. um, that way people would have an opportunity to to review it whenever whenever wherever right. you know um, i don't think I guess we could probably, I wouldn't want to put the whole thing in the newsletter in July, but we can certainly like e-blast e it out yeah. so that people can, can check it out. Just um, maybe extract the most important bits. Into the actual physical newsletter. Because mm -hmm. yes. we've never really done, at least in the two years that I've been here, a whole lot of effort in letting folks know about, hey, these are the ordinances that are coming down the pike. 
um, beyond sort of our legal Regular, minimums, right? You know, um, I think Council Member Ralk has been um, rightly so encouraging us to get out there a little bit more and let folks know about the changes that are happening before they happen. Yeah. So does that sound like a decent plan? I mean, I'm trying to sort of yeah. channel your mind right now. But, uh, we, yeah, that sounds great. I okay. love it. Okay. Can I also just submit to you, I sent an email um, uh, about Mount Rainier's language wording as well. I think that would be also comparable to, to entering in as a best practice. Hey, sure. this is what's happening in our direct neighborhood. That like might help to folks To include in, in here? Okay. Yeah, that okay. might help folks just to be like, okay, you know, especially people who are shrub loving, tree loving, you know, native habitat folks who might have spaces that are very busy that they might sure. say, oh yeah, I see the safety reason behind this. I understand and I believe and support the safety issue. And also areas that have native ha habitats like this are also doing this, so. That's great, help. that's yeah. great. And any language needs to be submitted. So the second reading of this ordinance will be on June 20th. And then we can discuss the um, hearing schedule. And Mayor, should I um, have the town clerk make this look all nice and official before June 20th? Yes, with okay. the, all the- uh, With all the changes? Changes. Okay. And that can be submitted prior to the meeting so we can all Absolutely. review it. Hi, I'm just gonna pause because we have a very important uh, visitor today. <laughs> we have old Senator Malcolm Agustin is visiting us with a very important message. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having us. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. You knew we were having pizza tonight, didn't no, you? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> Did I, I didn't. I didn't know Did that. I, I think it's appropriate that um, I'm, I'm glad that I'm here when you all are doing the work, right? Yeah. I mean, this is the, the actual work um, that's going on. And unfortunately, I missed the first day. You all, the way that you are set up, you pretty much immediately bring folks into your council. And so we missed the opportunity, first of all, to just congratulate all of you on your elections, your re-elections, your commitment to the town and making this town a better place. It's, a, it's not an easy thing to do. You, you give a lot for yourselves. Your family gives a lot. And I, I know I appreciate that. And I know that the town uh, benefits from that. But we are also just fortunate to also have someone new this time um, who is uh, newly elected, not um, re-elected as, as you all are. And so we really, myself and the rest of the delegation who could not be here tonight, wanted to acknowledge um, the new council member, Rauch, who said to me, what did you say to me? That you said that you would now start bothering me, not as a, a private <laughs> person, but now as a council member? <laughs> I think that was kind of your quote, right? <laughs> Well, guess what? Now you also get to get bothered too. So people will start to um, uh, approach you with their woes uh, and, and all the things that are going wrong. And, and, uh, and it's, um, but the good news is that um, we get the chance to make a difference. And so I'm really, um, I, we, we want to acknowledge that. And so we do have a citation uh, from the state um, that reads, um, our sincerest of congratulations are offered to Lauren Rout, council member, town of Brentwood, in recognition of being elected as a council member for the town. Thank you for your willingness to serve, and we are sure you will do an outstanding job as a leader of Brentwood Town Council. Congratulations, and it was supposed to have been presented on the third day of June, 2023, by myself, Senator Malcolm Augustine, Delegate Diana Bunnell, and Delegate Julian Ivey of uh, Prince George's County Legislative District 47A. So we just say welcome and congratulations and really look forward to working with you um, in this new role that you have and continue to work with all of you for the betterment of where we live. So congratulations. All right. Yeah, you can go down and get a picture. Yes, yes. <laughs> I need a t-shirt too. Yeah, I have t-shirts and I wore that all day Saturday. Oh. So I need to put it in the cleaning. Okay, part. all right. Okay. Yeah, burn it. It looks like pumpkin on this one. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, absolutely look forward to working with you all. Likewise. Thank you. All right. Always good to see you all. And we'll be at the meeting. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Let, yeah, we do have that. I hope that you all have got the information about that. And we try to get as many folks as possible to be a part of the, the restarting of the quarterly meeting with Maryland State Highway coming out of the efforts from you all 
to get that thing restarted. It is going to be tomorrow evening, so I'm grateful that you all have helped that and still looking forward, obviously, to helping to improve um, what we have happening on 38th here. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for thank the indulgence you. and uh, always here to serve. Thank Do you. you want to briefly tell what's going to happen on the 24th? The, the event? Oh, you're talking about the health fair yes. that we're having? Yeah, so uh, on the 24th at, the, at Bunker Hill, we are working with um, Good Intentions, which is a nonprofit, um, to bring a, a uh, health fair, health screenings, uh, and an opportunity as well. We will also have other things for folks to do um, because we think it's important that um, our folks uh, pay attention to their health and we want to bring that to them. It will be an event all day with things to do for the family, family members, and I definitely do encourage people to uh, come out. Um, we have shared uh, flyers and things like that for it. And so I do, you know, definitely thank you so much for Mayor for giving me the opportunity to share that, that we will be doing that here in the town on the 24th at the fire station. Thank you. Thank you. And it's going to be from one to yeah. four. One to four. One to four. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank All you right. so much for coming. Thank, thank you. you, Senator. All right. No other questions? Not, no. Not tonight? Not right now. No. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank Thank you. You. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. All right. So uh, that concluded the discussion of this um, ordinance. And I'm going back to the uh, council rules resolution 2023-07. So at this point, it's just for a discussion, and we on next meeting, June 20th, we're going to approve, pass and approve. So anyone um, volunteer to read this small print? Is this, is this what we agreed to <laughs> a couple years ago, or is this different? Uh, some changes were made. Okay. Right, so yeah, everything in red is. Mm -hmm. is everything in red has changed. Okay. And yes, the, the this was that document from a couple of weeks. Because we didn't we didn't read it, did we? Like I can't remember. During our organizational meeting, I don't think we read this, did we? No, we no, we discussed it, but this is not this include the changes that she sure. proposed. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Yeah, the whole thing doesn't have to be read though, does it? No. Oh, oh it's not like reading a resolution yes. or an ordinance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It has to be read. It has to be read. Resolution oh, ordinance. Oh, I meant like her comments. <coughs> like, how do you want to handle her comments when you read those? Yes. Because <laughs> we have to discuss those. Yeah. Just, the, just the comments, though, not the whole and thing, and not the whole. <laughs> it's the whole thing because we are okay. the thing. amending yeah. the previous one. This and like we, I mean, two years ago we did this during the organizational. We did because the organizational meeting two years it took, it took forever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, you got lucky because we didn't do the same thing this year. Should we say we're going to strategic retreat? No, you no, one of this. So now you. Well, technically, we need we need council rules. So. Yes, we got pizza to fortify us. <laughs> it's already past my bedtime. All right, uh, resolution twenty twenty three oh seven, a resolution of the mayor and council of and the order of business of town council meetings of the town of Brentwood and providing for conflict severability and effective date now. Therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the town of Brentwood as follows: Section one rules. It is the responsibility of the mayor and council to establish any rules for its guidance and government as it may deem necessary to carry out the orderly conduct of the town government. The following shall be the rules for the government of the town council of, of the town of Brentwood. Rule one, regular meetings. The town council shall hold regular meetings on the third Tuesday of each month. Uh, the meeting will generally commence at 7 p.m. or any other time as may be deemed appropriate and properly notified to the public at such time of day as the council may decide provided. However, that the council may dispense with any one, any space one meeting each month when it is anticipated that the business of the council is not urgent. I'm going to pause and just say that there might be some misspellings because I copied this from a PDF into a Word document, so there might have been a space in between those two words. I'm not going to pause for those in the future. Mm -hmm. Rule two, a sp special and emergency meetings. 
A special or emergency meeting can be called at the request of the mayor or the majority of the council members. Whenever a special or emergency meeting shall be called, a notice in writing shall be sent to all council members at least 72 hours before a special meeting when practical and at least 12 hours when practical before an emergency meeting. Said notice shall be signed. My comment is uh, maybe this could be an, elect an electronic signature. Said notice shall be signed by the mayor or vice mayor and shall be served upon each member of the council either in person or via electronic communication or by telephone stating the date and hour of the meeting and the purpose for which the meeting is called. Signatures may be electronic as time and coordination allow is, an, is a suggested edit. A copy of such notice shall likewise be posted and noticed to the public via any available means for communica of communication. <coughs> Rule three, informal or work session meetings, the mayor and town council may meet informally for study and discuss discussion of the affairs of the town, but no formal or binding action shall ever be taken at any such meeting. Scheduled work sessions shall be held at 7 p.m. on the first Tuesday of each month or at such other times as the mayor or council may decide. Rule four, meetings open to the public. All meetings of the town council to transact <coughs> town business, whether action is taken or not, shall be held at the town council or virtually unless the council indicates another advertised location and shall be open to the public except such meetings that may be closed subject to the provisions of the Maryland Open Meetings Act. Rule five, agenda. The mayor, edit, town administrator, town clerk, or their designee shall prepare an agenda based on input and advice from each member of the town council. Edit, the proposed agenda shall be completed at least 72 hours before a meeting when practical. All items are to be reviewed by the mayor or vice mayor before publishing all formal and informal meetings except emergency meetings when time does not permit for any special or emergency meetings when there is only one agenda item. Consent agenda. A description could be helpful, so this is my comment. A description could be helpful taken from consent agendas, broad source and consent agendas, what are they and how to use them. Consent agenda, a consent agenda also known as a consent calendar and Robert Rules of Order refers to individual points of discussion that are bundled into a single action item. Consent agendas help streamline approval of all actions with one single motion instead of filing multiple motions. They also help to minimize discussion and routine action items, save valuable time and expand opportunities to engage in strategic discussions and action planning. The most common information captured in consent agenda items, agendas include committee and previous board meeting minutes, consent agendas, what they are and how to use them, that's where I got that link, of committee and previous board me meeting minutes, routine correspondence, changes in procedure, routine revisions of a policy, example, changes in dates or dollar amounts due to changes in laws, updating documents, example, address change for the main office, standard contracts that are used regularly, example, confirmation of using the traditional in-house contract with a new vendor. Confirmation of conventional actions that are required in the bylaws, example, signatory authority for a bank account or acceptance of gifts. Information pertaining to the items to be included in a consent agenda should be distributed well ahead of the meeting. This allows thorough examination of the routine items without using up valuable meeting minutes. If a member has a question, they can contact a reference colleague to clarify a concern. If this is not helpful enough during the meeting before vote, any member may request that an item from the consent agenda be removed and discussed separately. To keep the process intact and efficient, this is the only comment allowed concerning the contents of a consent agenda. To streamline the process even more, members could be invited to contact the mayor prior to the meeting to request that an item be removed. If a majority of the council is in agreement concerning any matter discussed in a work session and ready to take action on said matter, then the mayor shall place the matter matters on the consent agenda for the next formal meeting of the council. Having had discussion in the work session meeting and agreement, items on the consent agenda, um, I found this very confusing, shall not be discussed or debated. So uh, at the time of the voting, all items on the consent agenda shall be voted on with one vote on a motion to approve consent agenda. It's just a very confusing sentence. A consent agenda item shall be grouped on the printed agenda and shall be handled in one motion from the council table, i.e., I move that the consent agenda be approved. Town council may approve and accept consent agenda items by one motion and vote. There shall be no general discussion on the motion. The following items will be acted upon by town council through the consent agenda and through a single vote. A new item may be added to the consent agenda and considered separately only upon request of a council member and by confirming majority vote of the town council. 
consent agenda items that may be included in the consent agenda or request for approval of, of proposed policy changes, acceptance and or approval of administrative reports and minutes from meetings of boards, committees, et cetera, approval for bids, bid awards, approval of recommendations by advisory committees and boards, appointment of town officers, appointment of citizen board members, any other request, acceptance or approval which the mayor determines properly can be considered a consent agenda item. Formal meetings. The agenda for the formal meetings, whether regular or special, shall include only such matter as the council, a member thereof, or town staff may have directed from a previous <coughs> informal work session meeting, together with, together with such other and subsequent matters as may be recommended for consideration by the mayor or as may be sponsored by a member of the council or town staff it is, if it is deemed by such person to be urgent. My comment was I think we add staff since many topics can be related to town administration and brought by town administrator or police department, et cetera. In the event a meeting is not preceded by an informal or work session meeting, the agenda of such formal meeting shall include only such matters as the mayor and the members of the council may direct or specify. Um, I propose that the mayor and council agree to agenda items for a formal meeting if those matters haven't been brought in a prior meeting. That way council and mayor are all in the same progress of matters. Any person or persons desiring to appear before the council on a particular subject matter may request writing to the mayor or to be, to be placed on the agenda by noon. T noon on Tuesday preceding the regular council meeting to be held on the following Tuesday or not less than three hours before any special meeting of the town council stating the purpose for which such person or persons desire to appear. Comment is, this differs from public comment, right? Might want to stipulate that here. See rule nine. Distribution. Each member of the town council as well as the public shall be provided with a copy of the agenda as far in advance of the meeting as time will permit. And a copy thereof shall be posted on the front door of the town hall. Um, my comment is, is it possible to separate members from public? I'd like to see the agenda before we get get it the day of the meeting. The draft we saw for a recent meeting didn't have all the items that ended up in it. I submitted a request, blah, 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 to add, to, to add the 521 event and it wasn't added. Maybe we use collaboration online tools to craft the draft by Thursday's close of business and then mayor, town administrator, close for edits, approve and send out. We could provide the public the agenda as far in, adva quote, as far in advance of the meeting time. Uh, I don't even know if you have to still post things on the front door of the town hall. I did not make that comment earlier. A, <coughs> next page, um, oh sorry, a reasonable number of extra copies of the agenda will be provided for the public according to the provisions of the Maryland Open Meetings Act. Rule six, presiding officer. The mayor <coughs> shall preside at all meetings if present and in their absence the vice mayor and in the absence of both mayor and vice mayor a council member shall be appointed to preside. Rule seven, decorum, while the council is in session, the members thereof shall not by conversation or otherwise delay or interrupt neither the proceeding nor the peace of the council and shall obey all orders of the council or its presiding officer except as otherwise herein provided. The presiding officer shall preserve strict order and decorum at all meetings. During council meetings, council members shall preserve order and decorum and shall obey the rules of the council. Every council member wishing to speak shall address the chair and upon recognition by the presiding officer shall confine themselves to the question under debate and shall avoid all personalities and discourteous language. I would like to make insert that edit instead of himself to the, themself. Um, private communication between council members during council meetings is inappropriate. Every council member desiring to question the administrative staff shall address their questions to the mayor who shall be entitled either to answer the inquiry themselves or designate a member of the staff for that pur purpose. That seems a little elaborate. That's an yeah, additional. We, don't necessarily do that that anymore. we might want to consider, and you might want to speak in here. We might want to consider editing that out then, maybe. Um, okay, I can't make a note and read at the same time. If somebody else could note that, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank, thank you. Um, a council member once recognized shall not be interrupted while speaking unless called to order by the presiding officer unless a point of order is raised by another member or unless the speaker chooses to yield to questions from another member. All members of the council shall extend the utmost courtesy to each other, to town employees and the public appearing before the council and shall refrain at all times from rude or, and derogatory comments. Maybe that should be or, rude or derogatory comments. Reflections as to the integrity, abusive comments and statements as motives and personalities. The council shall confine its remarks to the issues before the council. Members of the administrative staff and employees of the town shall observe the same rules and procedure and decorum applicable to the members of the council. 
while the presiding office officer shall have the authority to preserve decorum in meetings as far as staff members and town employees are concerned, the mayor also shall be responsible for the orderly conduct and decorum of all town employees under their direction and control when they are, not, when they are in their official capacity. The mayor shall take such disciplinary action as may be necessary to ensure that decorum is preserved at all times by town employees in council meetings. Any staff member desiring <coughs> to address the council shall state their name for the record and shall limit their remarks to the matter under discussion. All remarks and questions shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any individual member. No staff member other than staff member having the floor shall enter into discussion either directly or indirectly without permission of the presiding officer. I think we're halfway through, guys. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Staff members shall not address administrative and disciplinary actions at council meetings unless having adhered to the chain of command. The general public attending council meetings also shall observe the same rules of proprietary, proprietary, rules of, rules of, propriety, thank you, propriety, decorum, and good conduct applicable to members of the council. Any person making personal, impertinent, and, or, or slanderous remarks, or who becomes boisterous while addressing the council. I think boisterous needs to be defined. While addressing the council or while attending the council meeting shall be required to depart the building. Rule eight, order of business. All meetings, regular, special, and emergency of the council shall be open to the public promptly at the hour set on the day of each meeting. The members of the council, town clerk, and town administrator can and shall designate staff to take their regular stations in the council chambers and the business of the council shall be taken up for consideration and disposition in substantially the following order. Substantially, yeah. The meeting was called to order, moment of silence and pledge of allegiance, review and approval of agenda, general public comments, review and approval of minutes, official reports, old business, new business, consent agenda, public comments, agenda item related, announcements adjourn. Um, I'm inserting a comment here that we might want to consider the public comments opening as 1.A or wherever we put them, 3 point. Whatever. This one, uh, if you follow this meeting was called to the order, yeah. is, is one. The public is opening? Two is, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's at the very beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. But we need to open the meeting to allow for the comments, so that's why it's number four. Oh, got it. Okay. Rule nine, addressing the council. During the work sessions, persons may, persons may address the council only when uh, invited during the meeting to do so by the member of the council or the mayor. Um, so I scratch out requested and I'm saying needs clarification. Is this addressing the council during the meeting? If not, it contradicts formal meetings. Any person or persons desiring to appear before the council on a particular subject may request in writing to the mayor to be placed on the agenda. So um, I think it's just a little confusing in that sentence there. We um, also allow the town administrator or the police to present people to the governing body to speak as well. So we, we do need to clarify that a little bit more. Thank you. At formal meetings, any person desiring to address the council shall first be recognized for that purpose by the presiding officer. Addressing the council shall be limited to two mi minutes unless they are on the approved agenda. Should we have a time limit for that? Um, manner of addressing council time limited. Each person recognized to address the council shall come forward because not everybody is able, so I'm considering ability, they might not be able to step, maybe they're in a wheelchair, shall come forward to the podium with the microphone thereon and shall give their name and address in an audible tone for the record <coughs> and unless further time is granted for the council shall limit their address to two minutes for individuals and ten minutes for group presentations or such additional time as may be deemed appropriate by the council. All remarks shall be addressed to the council as a body and not to any member. No person other than the council and the person having the floor shall be permitted to enter into any debate or discussion either directly or through a member of the council without the permission of the presiding officer. Further, town council shall comply with this rule except that they are permitted to address the council from their seat. Nothing is the f in the foregoing is to be construed to prohibit a member of the council after having first been recognized by the presiding officer from directing questions and inquiries to individuals or other members of the council or from participating in debate and deliberations on matters then pending before the council. Rule 10 voting. The yeas and nays may be called for on any 
may be called for on any question and shall be ordered whenever called for by any member of the council present. Whenever the yeas and nays are ordered, the town clerk shall call the roll of council and record the vote of each member. Any member of the council can request the chair to call a roll, roll call vote. The chair may direct the town clerk to call the roll of each council member and record the vote of each member. Rule 11, procedure for adoption of ordinances. We seem to do a lot of resolutions. Do we need any meeting rules for those? Because I'm noticing that they're not in there. So procedure for adoption of ordinances. Adoption procedures. The procedure for adoption of ordinances shall be as outlined in section 404.0 of the town charter or as may be amended from time to time. When requested by the mayor, each department head or their authorized representative shall be present at any council meeting, whether formal or informal, to respond to inquiries or informational requests from the council or any individual member of the council concerning agenda items involving their department. A department head shall appear before the town council for information purposes by a majority of the council. Section two, conflicts. All prior resolutions or parts of prior resolutions in conflict with it, with any of the provisions of this resolution are hereby repealed. Section three, severability. If any section or portion of a section of this resolution is found to be invalid, unlawful, or unconstitutional, it shall not be held to invalidate the force or effect of any other section of this part of the resolution. Section four, effective date. The resolution shall become effective immediately upon its passage and adoption. Pass and adoption on this day of, whenever that day will come. Am I done? Oh, wait. Yeah. Is it not? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Questions? I don't have Bravo. questions, but I do have a couple of things. Okay. Actually, no, that's why I do have questions. And I have learned some things since I actually edited this, mm -hmm. since I've been on the council. So these, some of these comments might be um, mute at this point. So I am w I'm willing to entertain anything from anybody. And also, I hope you all have edits to make too. Thanks, Thanks for listening. Um, Thank you for doing the work. Okay, so uh, rule five, agenda. The mayor and then you inserted town administrator or town clerk or their designee shall prepare an agenda based on input. I actually don't think that we need to have town administrator or town clerk because either way it's a person appointed by the mayor. Mm. But uh, I but would defer to whatever the charter, else wants. I think it says the town clerk. <coughs> that I appoint the town clerk. So I'm gonna just say that we don't really always adhere to that because we have had administrations where the town administrator exclusively did agendas. Um, In the best. So we just need to figure that out. Um, can, can we put, just to hover on that one for a moment. So to clarify as a comment then it's just, just to maintain what's on our I would imagine it's just go with what our charter says. Mm -hmm. So we're saying take out the comment from add in town administrator and town clerk, or you're saying because of the way we actually do things, we should keep the I was the saying comment. I don't think we need to have town administrator and town clerk. I think it just should say uh, the mayor's designee. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Which is what it says, right? Mm -hmm. It says the mayor or their designee, but the mayor doesn't do the agenda. Mm -hmm. And hasn't, at least since I've been here, the mayor hasn't done the agenda. It's always been the either the clerk or the admin, and town administrator, I'm sorry. Um, so that's one change I would recommend. Uh, consent agenda. We have a very thorough explanation of what that is. And I think we could remove some of that. I would like to cap it at um, a consent agenda, also known as consent calendar and Robert's Rules of Order, refers to individual point of discussion that are bundled into a single action item, period. Consent agendas help streamline approval of actions with one single motion instead of filing multiple motions. Cap it there. Because the rest of it sort of yes. is it's, a it's little redundant. <clears throat> yeah, but it's a little redundant. Yeah, yeah. The rest of it was because I had no idea what a consent agenda was and had to go look it up. Right, right, right. So Fair. I agree. Fair. With that, <laughs> right. And then under that, we have items that are included in the consent agenda. I would like to withdraw standard contracts because we never approve contracts via consent agenda. We always break those out and approve separately. Um, While we're in that section, yeah, yeah. could I suggest also in that, oh, wait, we were capping. Are we? What about that paragraph that begins with information pertaining to the items? 
we are we okay with that? Or were you suggesting we get rid of that as well? I I could go either way. I could go either way with that paragraph. Uh, I think that was placed in there because we've been, well, I've been requesting to have all the documentations the Friday so the council have the weekend to review any documents before the meeting. Mm -hmm. But do we need to have it there considering we already have in another section how far and ahead agendas need to be sent out? Well, that makes sense. No, I think so was, we can, maybe we can redundant take that just out? to the fact that we have to have documentation. Right, right, I mean, right. we all wish to put things in the agenda. And just for clarification, I, I receive the agenda items and I send it over to the town clerk or to the uh, administrator, but um, it is imperative that we have documentation because otherwise we are just adding things to the agenda. We're going to be removing them or table them because we're not prepared to discuss. Right. So, okay. Mayor, um, should we then address the, so we say at least 72 hours, but should we expand it out a little bit then and give us more time? Because right now we're doing Thursday, Friday. Maybe not ish. less than 72. No less than 72 hours. No, no less. less than 72. Okay. Which technically is Saturday at because least. at Friday we still have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So then I would. Yeah, then we really. So uh, three days is, we're still getting more than three days. Right. We're getting three days if we get it by close of business. But if we get it early in the day, we have about three and a half, mm -hmm. maybe four days. I'd like to direct the conversation to the town administrator, presiding officer. Can I talk to him? Okay. Way to follow the rules. I know, man. It feels <laughs> awkward to do. It's like, oh, <laughs> that's so weird. And, like, <laughs> um, and your experience, I guess, Mr. Gasson. Should we be moving that back to like a Wednesday or a Tuesday? Like what's more helpful for the team here? Because I don't know what goes into compiling everything and getting out the door by 5 p.m. I'm just the person emailing stuff. So I'm, I'm curious to get y'all your take on that. Um, I'd be on, uh, from our perspective, since I've been here, the town clerk sends out the request and what he tries to do, he or she, excuse me, what they try to do is give a deadline for the agenda mm -hmm. from the all parties involved, um, police, treasurer, and the council. So it all depends on what their schedule is like. Mm -hmm. So I can't promise you a situation. The good news is, is that our charter allows for amendments to be had or made at the meeting. So if there's something that is paramount that you missed on the official agenda, you can always add it the day up. Unfortunately, we won't be prepared for it, but if it's paramount and the world's going to end, then you can always add it to the agenda the day of. We should try to limit that. Right. Just for the sake of transparency, because the agenda that has gone out to the public will not have whatever amendments we make at the meeting. Mm -hmm. No, no, and I understand that. that. No, no, no. I was saying for the record. Oh, yes. And to everybody yeah. here, mm -hmm. that we should try to limit making additions. This is true. Or retractions mm -hmm. at the meeting. At the this meeting. is true. And, and so, uh, the treasurer is currently not here, so she may have something for obvious reasons. And so I don't want to get into people's schedules and work and what they're doing to say, hey, you didn't do this, so <coughs> we can't present it on Tuesday, if that makes sense. Um, in the age of COVID, right, you can be out a week sick. You could be. Um, so it would at least give you Well, that's when, uh, like, for instance, when they call me or the treasurer or the uh, town attorney and call me, they um, asked me specifically if we have something in the agenda that relates to them. So I go back to the agenda, I look it up, and it's like, no, oh, I don't right. need to have you no. in this meeting because there's nothing related to, to you, mm -hmm. per se. So that was, that was the case with Shelly today. We had nothing other than, you know, I already have the numbers that I need to know. And the attorney said he had, he wasn't able to make it, so I was looking at this, and I was like, okay, yeah, maybe we have ordinance and resolutions, but the, nothing that we cannot go back and forth because we already discussed it. So. Okay. 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 And of course, for any chance, like you have something in the agenda, but you uh, don't come 
and you, the person presenting that, I go into table that until the person that introduced whatever um, you know matters is mm -hmm. here. So yeah. that's what we do. Okay, skipping down, we're still on rule seven for decorum. Um, down at the bottom, all remarks and questions shall. This is if a member of the staff needed to. Um, address the council. All remarks and questions shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any individual member. I don't necessarily think that's necessary because if it's a question related to the cable committee, we're going to ask council member Morrow. Mm -hmm. If it's public works, we're going to ask mm -hmm. vice mayor like, and if it's event related, mm -hmm. they would ask me. So I think we could probably remove that um, portion. Uh, Council member Rauch said we should define the definition of boisterous on the following page. So we should probably, I, I just circled and put unruly. Um, I have a few things at, at the risk of getting beat up. I'm going to say the thing that I kind of am scared about is how do we feel about removing the Pledge of Allegiance? I'd like to keep it. I'd be okay removing it. I'd it's like to keep just it. Just one is removing Pledge of Allegiance from council meetings. Meeting a month. I, I'm personally fine with keeping it, but I'd be curious to hear your your reasons why. Because I don't want to just skate by that because you may have some a, a reason why you think it's important or not. I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm just trying to be open to. Comments. I don't find it necessary for the meeting, but I also will not put up a fight if we decide to keep it. Okay. We can come back to that. Okay. Moving down. I um, appreciate that you brought that up. Thank you. Um, I think we, when we were sworn in, we made an allegiance or a pledge or a oath, oath to the Constitution, to the Constitution and the country and the state, um, and maybe you know. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to fight for or against that suggestion. <coughs> um, but yeah, it's just neither here nor there for me because we've already made the oath. Okay. So maybe it's maybe it's by personal observance during that time period that I can have a sentiment. Okay. For me, it's just traditional thing that I've been doing it for ten years, so it's like part of the meeting for me. Okay, <clears throat> and my last um, um, comment is addressing the council where we have people have to give their name and address. I don't think that they have to give their actual address. I wrote that down. You did? You are correct. I will be comfortable with like name and Councilwoman and Taylor Varnum Street. Yeah, all they legal, I think all they have to give is their name. I think they can refuse the rest if they so choose. So this is a good question because a clerk always asks for the name and street. Maybe Traditionally, street, and I never knew where that originated from, or if people could not yeah. provide it if they didn't want for, it. For, we've always asked for name and address. When I would sometimes sub in as clerk in the minutes, right. if they said I live at forty three sixteen Taylor, I would just note forty three hundred block of Taylor, because it is a public document. I don't necessarily feel comfortable putting someone's full address into the meeting. I would be comfortable with the hundred block in the street or just the street. I feel like just if you the all are good with that, yeah, maybe not even street because you don't have to live in town to participate in a public meeting. Yeah, I, th I, I would I would <clears throat> phrase it and say something that says you know so address the council shall I'm sorry shall give their name and if the person so chooses address in an audible tone because that way we can ask for their name and address but it's not required if they choose not to because I remember at MML last year. One of those like classes I went to that were like you know, big legal cases that have small town consequences. One of them was about somebody being firm about a resident identifying their address, right? And and like it went got into a big deal, but they actually for safety didn't, reasons it just might not be advisable to, to do that. Right. So um, so I, that's how I would phrase it. I would just say like if the person so chooses, address in an audible tone. Yeah. We can request yeah. it, but we can't like demand it. We can't require. Okay. Yeah, that think makes sense. If we back into like, why would we want it? Yeah, you know. Then and there's some people that um, maybe have 
backgrounds in which they need to protect their privacy. Right. Um, maybe they're not on Google Maps and right. they don't want to give their address, like that kind of thing. So. The address may be pertinent to the issue, but it may not be. And I don't, I don't think that if it's not pertinent to the issue that we should go on the record to require that people give, it, give that information. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that somebody's given a comment in regards to a uh, parking permit for their street, and we've or, asked them to come to Or flooding or something like that, where right. it's directly related. And even then, I don't want to really know their address per se. I just yeah. want to know that it's, they're relevant to the conversation, yeah, so yeah, whether they're yeah. a resident or not, or you know, their title for a formal presentation, those types of things are helpful for me. But yeah, I don't, I've never needed to know anybody's address, and I, I agree. I, I don't think we need to require it. Okay. Those... Those were all of mine, other than the things we discussed as we were reading the doc. Thank you guys for indulging me. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is coming back on the regular meeting agenda as the resolution. All right, just for the sake of the time, I just want to be conscious about this. Uh, long agendas, they're not going to do in two hours. So when you are sending all the wishes and wants, this is what happened. We are on 830. So maybe, Mayor, can I add one more comment to this uh -huh. then? Should we give consideration to a, a time being added to an agenda item, or would that be helpful for you? Because I'm trying to think what I see some of our neighbors do. I think Mount Rainier does that. And they'll say like 15 minutes, whatever the agenda item is. And then by the time, you, if you reach that to our, you know, total, and then it's, I, I think what you're saying is, is for you, you would want to move some of those other items to the next mm -hmm. meeting because now we're just getting out of hand with the agenda. So yeah, okay, I don't know. we're not even half through the agenda yet. So and then limited our. our I don't like to limit because you know, but for the sake of the time, trying to make this item discuss how can we do? We either limit the timing. We're not only going to discuss five minutes or ten minutes, depending, or we have less items in the agenda. Well, may I ask, can that, uh, so procedurally, so I assume like all of our comments get submitted to the town clerk, you draw up a draft, and then they get submitted to you, right? Mm -hmm. At that point in the process, could you start redlining items that you deem less necessary, circle back to whomever or circle back to the town clerk so that they can circle back to the council member. But then we get comments like, you know, you didn't get my uh, <laughs> agenda items in the uh, agenda. So that's how, how, you know, that's the thing. I don't want to make <clears throat> you feel like, you know, I'm not taking you in consideration. It's just like, because I'm looking at that time sure. and we understand that we have discussed this for a long time that two hours max should be your meetings because after that it's just like, Dragging well, ourselves. Yeah, into I mean, maybe you could. I don't, I don't know what to say. Well, maybe you could. You know, maybe you. You know, you look at that list, and maybe you circle back with the council member and say, "Okay, what's your top priority? Because mm -hmm. we need to cut some fat." You know, and then. But I actually have it here. Everything that was sent to us, just so you can see it. Like this is so this the is amount like, of time. This is with time. no edits. No edits. No Everything edits. was added into. The only thing I, I request to the uh, to Mr. Larry was like, if you don't have any supporting documents, don't add it. Mm. <clears throat> so I'm actually fine with that comment about because I think what it can start to do is we start really laying out the agenda for like two or three meetings at mm -hmm. it. So if we're starting to get too many things, it's like to me it's okay unless it's really really like we got to get this thing done. I'm okay for my agenda item to get moved to the next meeting, and now we know two or three or four meetings out, like how our agendas are starting to fill up because we're getting a lot of content. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a, it's a bad issue to have too many things. It, it probably would help us out because now we can start laying out a schedule of what we want to talk about over the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, if you need to red line stuff, I mean, it is, it's, it is what it is. I mean. Yeah. I just don't want you to feel like, oh, she's not taking my items in consideration. Oh no, we'll still send yeah. those comments to you. We'll still be mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm playing. But, um, yeah, <laughs> if I may, I think, <laughs> I think my only concern is that things will start to stockpile, right? Because right. what's important in two weeks, something else will be equally important in two more weeks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes kicking the can further down the road just delays having the conversation that we need to have. I think because Councilmember Rauch is new, we are addressing some very like 
time sensitive issues, for example, the ordinance for the shrubs, the mm -hmm. reviewing the rules. I think honestly, once we get into a solid pace of meetings, I don't anticipate us having very many that run past 830 at the mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to get into the habit of just pushing things forward because we'll all continually be pushing things forward and we never get to come in with a fresh set of ideas to debate or things to discuss. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it feels like it's a balance, right? It's just a balance. And yes, I'm new and thank you for indulging some of the, the items that I want to have discussion around. Um, but I also don't want to feel like um, something can't be brought up just because we're trying to stay to two hours or something, you know, either. I think it's a balance, right? It's, it's figuring out what's important and mm -hmm. also being flexible. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would also encourage all of us, you know, as we have a lot on our plates and are feeling ambitious to find other ways getting things done outside of council meetings, right? So, like, I'm looking at, like, the three things that I were submitted was the invoice for art magnet repairs and then of course the shrubs ordinance and then the, I think it's on here somewhere though let's find a time to get oh yeah the council retreat right mm -hmm. so like of those three I think if I was told to I would coordinate the council treat, retreat outside the meeting and I would push off the art magnet repairs mm -hmm. until later you know what I mean like I think if somebody told me you need to find a solution for this outside of the meeting I would mm -hmm. I would be able to and I don't you know can't speak for everything, but I don't think everything needs to be discussed within a meeting. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that, except for the examples that you chose to highlight, <laughs> because we did try to do the strategic retreat outside the meeting, and it didn't work. And we brought it to a meeting, and it still didn't work. Still didn't work. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so I think it's it's also item dependent. It is. You know, is. like like I understand that some of the things I was thinking about bringing up, like you know, there's a new law around. Restaurants can't dispense foodware and we have restaurants in our town and so are we helping them get to that place? And so I understand that it's not on here and so therefore I can take another That's an route email. and I can take yeah. another route to get it done. Yeah. 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 Like for instance, print out the, um, the new flyer that they put out and distribute it. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to be exactly. discussing that. Yep. Yep. So. All right, so let's move to the next item, which is the 38 place sidewalk, which I already uh, discussed with um, the man of treasure, and we were talking about, and also with Vice Mayor, about either ARPA funding or using HUR funds to uh, complete these uh, sidewalks. But of course, we are stuck in the engineering piece. Why are we stuck there? Because we need to have an a engineer to give us like a quote. No, I have a quote. Well, you have one quote, but you know, according to our chart, we need to find out more. So I think I forward that email from last year where Mr. C Claire Clark? You, you oh, did. Clark. So Clark. Yeah. first and foremost, I, I had to make sure that we wanted to move forward with the switching of the funding. Now that we've done that, or you've agreed to do that, now I can go out and see, uh, seek other quotes for the engineering piece. But I had to make sure that that was a part of the process and that it was approved before I started to do that. So I can get two other quotes. I know another two other, and your company, that the person that you and said. just so, um, the quote that we received was for? The, the one quote? Yeah, oh, the, for the engineering services? Uh -huh. It was 30, it's $40,000. But there are other companies out there. I just need to okay. give in the green light. Yeah, because I, I resent that only just so you can see the quote that we received from uh, the engineer for Allison Street. Just thinking that Allison Street was a long, uh, mm -hmm. longer. No worries. Uh, yeah. Blocks mm -hmm. right? from 37 to 34. Mm -hmm. So, and I think it was about 40,000. Yep. Do we, need to, do we need to do anything with number three? No. Do they want to do that? Uh, what we need is quotes in order to move. But we, then, need, then, we, need, no, no. we don't need to do anything tonight. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. The first thing we need to do is to agree that we're going to. 
he said move funding around. But there's nothing we need to do tonight. No, not to, but I just want to let you know that yes. now that I know this, I'm going to start moving forward to Fantastic. getting this project off the ground. Yeah. Okay, so just make sure so we're clear. So you know that it's not going to be our funding. Right, so like what, what Mr. Gaston is, is referring to is that we'd use highway user funds mm -hmm. to, to, to finance the project, and we would use ARPA funds for the other sidewalk repairs, just the hit and miss cracks and potholes and things mm -hmm. like Correct. that. Correct, and that was what, right, so I had to, right, that's what this discussion is all about. So, yeah. and we had, because we didn't want to miss represent the use of the ARPA funds. Sure, that it's actually a better use of both funds because their ARPA funds are usually are sort of like meant for everybody, and that's mm -hmm. nice because they'll get spread around with all the sidewalk repairs, and the highway user funds are meant for sidewalk and street projects. I mean, that's so it's a much more sort of truer use of the. It's what we should have. I so it's kind of like three and four kind of like work because we're deciding that 38 yeah. place mm -hmm. is going to be HUR funding and mm -hmm. then uh, the town sidewalk repair Palooza is going to be <laughs> ARPA funding. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Very much. That is correct. So it, and that's By 80, August 1st. It's 80,000 that we have in the ARPA. And then we can use HR funding, which I sure the show is in excess of 200,000. Yes. Correct. So, if I may, we did not do anything for Sidewalk Palooza in 2022. We did something in 2021. 21. I did that on purpose to encumber. Then, come July 1st, we should get another allotment of funding from NDOT for the highway user funds. Those combined. Uh, fingers crossed we should be able to well get but that that uh sidewalk repairs will be coming now from arpa no the, the, the general sidewalk repairs the general, the yes. general sidewalk yes. repairs but the installation of the sidewalk on 38th place right. will mm -hmm. come from highway right. user funds yes. for it, two it, years in a row and yeah. i did not specifically Put that out there because i wanted to we have not received the new numbers right uh I, we have not but we should yes. get the number Sometimes july 1st yeah. july 1st it should be coming so we need i need to talk to the treasurer as to what the number right, is so what we need at this point is the engineer quote correct so yeah okay. and i and i'm out out no i'm working on all of it now okay. all right. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm working solved. on all of it now thank you so much yep. next item which is the traffic study for the entire town mr gaston i know you yep. submitted some uh, this is from the traffic group. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. This is from the traffic group. You guys should have. Uh, you guys, the council should have a copy of it, and okay. that amount is forty thousand dollars, uh, thirty-eight thousand dollars. I apologize. What they will do is do an entire survey of the town for traffic, including parking, and once they make their recommendations, we'll move forward from there. I concur. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that we haven't put out an RFP for this service. We did not. Um, this is one of those areas where there are a limited number of people who actually do this service. I relied on the expertise, the magnanimous um, idea and concept of the police chief, and he recommended this particular company. Which is wonderful. Um, but I'd be more than happy to see if I can find other quotes. Yeah. Because, I mean, this, this, this traffic study is going to be pretty important down the road. I concur. So I'd, I'd like to at least explore attempt. all of our options. At least attempt. I will make an attempt. And I will you lean again once. Uh, lean. There you go. Police chief. Um, the traffic group does most of the local government's things in this county and the area. Um, it is very hard to find another company. Um, I've, we've tried in the past. Um, we will try again to sure. see if we can get someone, but uh, we'll give it our best shot. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's, it's just it, it's our job to open it up. No, I, it, and so. I totally understand, sir. It's, and, and the other thing is that we were we were looking at the um, the RFP process, which is um, if another municipality or local government has done it um traditionally in the past we have piggybacked off of another local government's contract mm -hmm. um the same way that we purchase police cars and things of that nature because mm -hmm. um we get the better rate but we'll see what we can find thank you so we're going to proceed with the rfp process no we're going to do a quote i'm just going to find quote. other company yeah okay. we're going to do a quote so, this is um fairly okay. important and we want to move quickly quicker on this than can we have a discussion before minute, you finalize that yeah, concept i thought we just agreed to an rfp process yeah that's what i just thought for the traffic engineering it, 
is $38,000. So can we pause on the whole discussion? Because I think it connects into the next topic, which is Safer Streets and Roads for All Vision Zero Grant. Yes. So, so, so two things, I guess, and we'll, I'm not going to get too far into the next agenda item because I don't want to be out of order, but the grant would impact it if we decide to go with it because you can't be in the middle of an RP or in the process of doing a traffic study and also mm -hmm. go after this Safe Streets for All grant. Timeline wise, a Safe, Street, Safe Streets for All grant you would know by September. So, I, what I would propose then is take some consideration of an RP being prepared to go out because we know we'll need to do something with that at one point and potentially wait until September. And if we don't get the federal grant, you don't get it, and then we would move forward quickly with the RFP and either get or, or go off of a, an adjacent municipality's existing contract. Mount Rainier has an existing contract. We could go off of theirs as well. So we do have multiple options. But I just want to make sure that was said out loud to take into consideration for this, <coughs> this discussion, if that makes sense. They didn't Mount Rainier use the tool design group or somebody like that? So they, I mean, they, they, tool that's group. what they did is a traffic study, right? Correct. So they're, so they're so you want to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they did beyond even a traffic study. They looked at traffic and safety and different areas within Mount Rainier, um, the whole town, a whole town look, but it was not just traffic. It was, it extended to pedestrians, cyclists, uh, all kinds of different aspects. That's what I would aspects. like. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And we've also got State Highway Administration working on something in 38th. Right. I don't know what they're doing. Right. So your recommendation is that we hold on or we uh, actually prepare the language for the RFP now? So I, I would say just have our homework ready to go, have the RFP ready, and table it until we know if we can get the federal grant, which is a planning and demonstration grant. Again, I'm just, I'm just, that's what I'm proposing, but I'm up for the, the discussion on the topic. I know we want to move fast on this thing, but there's potentially free federal money um, that we could get and we would know in, in, in a few months, you know, so whether or not grant, we get in or not. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. The grant will cover this? It would, plus demonstration activities, basically doing some actual doing tests some in the sections. So. And you and I, we are going to be attending this infrastructure um, workshops. They might be telling us which grants are available up there oh, the, to apply. the grant boot camp? Yes. <laughs> That's what they're calling it, is the Grant Boot Camp. Yes. What is the Grant Boot Camp? What is the boot For the record, uh, we... I signed up wrong, you know, I was signing up wrong, so to attend I got an email and I was like, I'm taking a class, okay. <laughs> we were asked, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. For the record, when I was asked to recommend um, the extent to which Councilmember Monroe spoke of with bike lanes, pedestrian safety, things of that nature, when I was asked about it, the traffic group is specific for what I was asked to check into, sure. so I just, you know, didn't want to mislead by saying there's no other group or whatever, but that group particularly, um, speed studies, things of that nature, is commonly used, and that's why um, we, that's why I said that we, that group was, was the only group that was out there to do what I was asked to see. What and I think you're right, and I think just a few months ago, we were looking, we were sort of had a narrow vision, right. but following some more recent discussions, right. the community it's, it's meeting, it's a sprung. Yeah. 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 Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. That, and again, thank you for that clarification. Right. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, I wasn't saying the traffic group, on it, but they mm -hmm. are speed and what we were looking, what we were looking for originally before we added these additional pedestrian safety bike lanes and things of that nature, which Mount Rainier has done. Sure. So, yeah, and to be, I'm sorry, Mayor, I'm jump no. in. One last comment. I think Mount Rainier has been candid in sharing with us, too, is that they were the same boat. They started mm -hmm. with a very narrow focus, and right. theirs expanded as well. So I think it's appropriate that we all realize that we need to be more broad in our, mm -hmm. our, our thinking on this thing. So. Mm -hmm. that's, that's and it sounds like if we had an RFP that was active, we would not be eligible to receive this grant. You, you were not. So no. that's great. It gives us some time to create an RFP that maybe is a little bit more holistic. Right. Um, <laughs> while you guys do your thing. Next agenda so. item. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I suppose. So, Pepco Sustainable Community Grant. Oh, I think we're still on A. Are you on A? 
on sacred creeks. So it kind of yeah, it was. I think we're, we're still we're on. We're gonna start with this first part. Oh, so we six. jump. You skip six. The public safety committee yeah. reestablished committee resolution twenty seventeen dash three. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sure. That one I can cover, and then we can jump into safer streets for all. Or I'm happy to. No, I think go with the. Okay, so public safety committee reestablishing the committee. Um, in 2017, there's a resolution that was adopted by the town of Brentwood. Um, it's on the website 2017-03 <coughs> that um, uh, established a public safety committee um, uh, that would. That's actually not the document. Um, I don't think uh, mm -hmm. town administrator Gaston. This is your yeah, that's the that's the next one. Um, okay. And guess what? You have to read this again. Oh yeah, and we can skip we can <laughs> skip the public safety committee re, um, re reinvigoration until the next. But it's part of this. It's not any longer. This is an old document. Um, this is not the most accurate, updated document uh, that was shared with the amendments made into it that refocus it to a possibly a different committee or a task force or whatnot. So this is not correlated with the public safety committee at this point, at this juncture. It's right. up for discussion. So can I maybe Mary clar clarify? So the intent behind, so there's one thing we need to do as part of the grant process and we can argue that we need to do it no matter what, which is pass a resolution or show some form of commitment to Vision Zero. So the federal grant looks for that, whether it's a letter from the mayor or a resolution or something that you pass. Can you, I'm sorry, can you just, before sure. you further, can you just explain briefly what Vision Zero is? Absolutely. And so Vision Zero has been around for like 20 to 30 years, I believe it started out of Europe. And then since then, uh, specific to us, the county has passed it and a number of neighboring, almost all neighboring county municipalities and states have passed some form of support for Vision Zero, which basically sets a goal to get to zero deaths by a certain year, and most people say by 2030, and I think that's what our county is committed to as well. And so when you're going for these grants and or moving forward in general, it's good to align with what is being done in other local, state, or county partners. And so that's why we wanted to pass at least a, a resolution and I think part of it started with the public wanting to reinvigorate the public safety committee, but we also realized we needed to show a commitment to Vision Zero so that we can add it to the application. So that's why the two topics got intertwined. If that's accurate, you're you're oh, yeah, you're almost bullseye there. So it um, it's good for the town safety period to wow. adopt Vision Zero as we want to have zero injuries or deaths in our town. Um, due to traffic or, or um, roadway issues, pedestrians getting hurt, cyclists, et cetera. We wanna adopt that regardless, <coughs> but because there is a Safer Streets and Roads for All grant, um, we're looking at what the requirements are in order to meet that grant um, and get the, the funding to support the needs of the town. <coughs> so, so one of the, the needs, and I think um, Council Member Monroe summarized all of this very well in, in, an, in an email that was shared in preparation for the meeting, um, but there are several <coughs> steps that are needed, and some of those we already have, which is great, and some of those we need to do. So the resolution is a new thing. Um, we need to have a vehicle, a, public, a, a committee or a task force or something, a, some way to engage around um, public safety, Vision Zero, um, engaging the community, our business leaders, um, our residents, our neighboring towns, et cetera, stakeholders. And that was the thought at the time really quickly was that that, could, that vehicle could be reviving the public safety committee. I'm interested in reviving it with Chief Washington anyway because we have some areas that are even outside of traffic or pedestrian or cyclist safety. Think safety around our children in this town who are going to school and who are engaging in summer playtime in the park and um, and all kinds of other, other areas of just walking to Thomas Stone. We know that that's a, a busy place and a lot of different folks are you know, coming in, residents and non-residents, et cetera. So we thought maybe the vehicle would be the Public Safety Committee, um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. It could be the Public Works Committee. It could be a designated task force that is stood up specifically for this time period. So tonight we, we 
um, we brought the, some resolution language. It's unfortunately titled proclamation, which was changed. Um, and also the, site, the citing in this resolution to refer to um, the public safety committee was also edited to um, consider other bodies that would be on the second page towards the bottom of the page where we get to um, section three, section two. Um, so we wanted to introduce and have a dialogue around the, 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 the resolution because it's important to the town, period, if we get the grant money or not, but it's also necessary to apply for the grant. So the resolution um, and talking about the grant. How's that? Yep, so Mayor here and that, I think what we wanna do at minimum is read out the resolution. So we're trying to figure out if we can get the copy with the comments and how would you want to handle that agenda item? You want to wait a moment until we can get that before the body here because I don't want to read it and folks don't have the. Um, well, help me out. I'm sorry. Does a resolution? And I apologize. I'm still like a newbie here, um, but I'm not. Do we need do, to read it tonight? Uh, yeah. Do we need to read it tonight? That's a good point. We have time, right. the, so that application is not due until July 10th, so we can technically get it meetings. done at the next tonight. meeting. Yeah. So that can actually. That's a good point. Um, I, the only reason I say that is that I've had the opportunity to, to think through this because Councilmember Ralk has sort of kept me abreast of everything you've been doing, but I don't know if everyone else has, and it's, a, in my opinion, a fair amount of information to digest at one time. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Sure. And I think uh, same thing, that can be table in for the next, because we have to... It's good that you brought in a work session, but we actually have going to act on a regular meeting. So this Correct. can be for the next meeting. And so to be clear on our next steps, then we will read the resolution at the next meeting. We'll and proceed adopt. and adopt it. Mm -hmm. We'll proceed with drafting up some initial grant application information this year. Mm -hmm. At least to get us started. Chief has already shared the data for traffic data that we'll need as a part of the application. Mm -hmm. And a key part of it is also the 20% match, and we'll need to determine a number that the council agrees to put in that application. And so if we go for 200,000, 20,000, 40,000, 40,000, yeah. Man, my wife is at home looking 40. at me right now, shaking her head, 40,000. Um, and then where that match would, in theory, come from, because we can't match with federal dollars. Like, we can't match ARPA money with federal uh, or highway user funds yeah. or something like that, yeah. Right, so, so that um, would be for consideration at the yeah. next My meeting. only question I have is like, oh, uh, right, right, right. so this is going to replace resolution 2017-03? No, it would, the idea is to, um, so 2017-03 created like this public safety committee. Mm -hmm. And one of the requirements to apply for this grant is that you have a resolution saying we're committed to you know, no deaths, zero traffic deaths. And part of our part of our commitment is having a committee. Okay. And so the suggestion was perhaps we could revive this old committee mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to to look it over. I was saying, well, maybe with the public works committee, and so we can discuss that. Okay. But um, having a committee to sort of oversee the changes is needs to be part of this resolution. Okay. Right. And. The key part in the, what they're looking for is not to be siloed and work across. So the public works could be the vehicle for the actual grant and managing the work. The public safety committee, for example, could help out with committee meetings, community, community meetings, outreach. community outreach. The senior committee should be a part of this. The chief should be a part of this. The green team should be a part of this. If we talk about creating an equity committee or racial equity committee in the future, mm -hmm. that should be a part of it. So the PTO as well. well. PTO, so, the, so there's a lead committee that's like serving as the holder of the grant and being a point person on it but the idea is that all these committees should talk Working they, they want to see collaboration as a part of it so mm -hmm. all right. did you have other comments right the other things i think we if we're if, which is totally cool if we're coming back on the 20th to read the the corrected resolution is um we will need to decide it, is it the public works committee that will be named as the as the point committee? So we need to change that and agree that that's cool that we do that. Um, and also, we, I think we shouldn't delay and wait until the 20th, but we need letters of support 
from our neighboring towns. Um, we're considering providing one for Mount Rainier, who is also applying for a Safer Streets and Roads grant, but a different grant than what we're applying for, because they're at the stage of implementing. They've already done their plan design. We're at the stage of designing a plan. So they're, they're going for a different grant. We would love to submit a letter of support saying, we're gonna actually, we have roads that touch each other. So we're interested in collaborating and supporting you guys in this grant and going for the grant. Um, also up and down, you know, from county to Senate to US Congressman Ivy, it would be helpful to have letters of support. Other, other cities, um, we've studied other uh, safer streets and road for all grant cities and looked at what have they, you know, those who have won, what did they have in their package? And some of them had let the letters of support from um, legislators, from residents, from community organizations. So that's something I think we would wanna pull the language together now. And I don't know if we, if we wanna wait until the 20th to send letters out, cause I think it'll take longer time. I think so we should start we, on that sooner rather yeah. than later. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Okay. And since we're committed to the 38th Street project mm -hmm. with Senator Augustine as well as the two delegates. I think yeah. uh, we should probably reach out to them first and find out if they'd be willing to write yeah. a letter of support. I think them, as, them along with Juanika Fisher are shoe ins. Yeah, right? yeah mm -hmm. so the th that was the goal. Like District 47, yeah. Juanika, I'm sorry, Council Member um, <laughs> Fisher, very comfortable right now saying first names. And but, I'm sure um, Mayor Benitez would. Yes, write and Cottage. As well as Mayor Petrella. Robinson and um, good lord, Carter City Carter is um, Omar Manor. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't say Carter Carter City Cassanias. actually. Mayor Casanias would be willing. To well, both, yeah. Well, well, I would say Carter City and Cole yeah, yes. and Cole um, Mar. Um, Wheatley. Wheatley. Right. Um, Commissioner Wheatley. And so, and then procedurally, Mayor, do you are you do you want to work with the town administrator? Or who do you want to handle being the person? Are you comfortable with us reaching out and doing all this like work to get the letters of support and copy you all? Or do you want that to have have the town administrator send out the emails to everybody? I just want to make sure we don't overstep on reaching out no, to no, folks. No, 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 that, that's fine with me. I mean, if you're going, you two are taking the lead in this one. Okay. That's fine. Look at him, not me. Well, but the only I'm thing is that like, over. You, would, there cannot be three no, council people right. working in the same. So it has would, to be two. Would it be more professional to have the town administrator request that letter? If, you know what I mean? <coughs> would we get a better response if the town administrator? Can we draft an email I, and have Mr. Gaston send it? That's I what think, I'm saying. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's about relationships too. Like mm -hmm. I think if you if somebody has a relationship sure. with somebody, use that relationship. Yeah. I don't have any problem it. asking yeah. the mayor for support letters. Right. Exactly. So if we could all work together sure. with Mr. Gaston to produce the letter request and like the draft language and to be we, like. Each we'll have give our you relationships. Something to work with, mm -hmm. and, okay. you know, something to start from. That exactly. Sounds good. Yeah. Maybe that sounds the mayor good. could reach out to the mayors, mm -hmm. and we'll keep right. a list. Why don't we pull Council a list Member together? Monroe, maybe reach out to the delegates and Senator Augustine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. Mr. Um, and reach out. To we have a whole list of people we need to. I can reach out to Council Member Fisher. Fisher. Great, mm -hmm. great, great, great. I will send you thoughts and prayers. Her and I oh, you will reach out to your contacts who are in Hyattsville or um, houses of worship oh, or senior areas or any people you know. Mm -hmm. Any th How anybody? Wait, what about Hyattsville's mayor? There was one city. Yeah, I could, call I could to ask order, please. <laughs> there was one city. Sorry, there was one city that had hundreds, like pages so of letters of support. As many as possible. I mean, the people who live on Thirty Eighth would like to have us get this grant you know sure. we can give them something right sure. of support as well yes and residents who are watching this please submit your letters of support to yes. info at brentwood md we will provide you the language within the next few days of how we will you provide you the language within yeah, the next few days all right so i think those are the most immediate That's it. Uh, can we move to the next item on the agenda? So Pepco Sustainable Communities Grant. I'm working on um, developing uh, an application for the Pepco Sustainable Communities Grant, which would fund also similar things at the at the price of ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars for different areas um, and different 
uh, actions. So I'm, re I'm planning to request for um, grant funding from this um, grant towards uh, creating a, a climate action plan that would also follow similar language as a safer streets and roads for all, which is just adopting a similar thing, having a committee, adopting a resolution. We already have so many resolutions and ordinances, but being able to take a holistic overarching view of what the town should be doing in, in next steps and not just kind of let's do this and let's do that but like let's really look at what's needed for a long-term um, sustainability plan so I'm working on that and I just wanted to let you all know I have nothing to look at at this time sorry but next week we have a resident that I think may be able to help with that I'll get their information and provide it for you. All right. We're good. All right. Ecclesia International requesting the closure of 37th Street on Saturday, July 29th. Yes. So I guess at this point, we all. It vote. We don't vote during this meeting. I know. You right? I was just concur. So. We can concur. The one question that I didn't ask. We could put it on consent though, right? Them, we could put it on consent. Um, the one thing that we didn't ask them is do they have their own barriers to mm. block off the road or are they expecting us to provide? That would be a question that Mr. Gaston, if you don't mind following up with them. Sure. Just uh, to ask how they're gonna block the street. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly in the past, because this is not the first year they're doing this, they've done it before pandemic. I guess this, the reason they stopped was because of, but uh, they they have their own. They have their own yes. blockades. Mm -hmm. So we never had any never had intervention or anything. Okay, I'm, I'm in support. Mm -hmm. So. Me too. Anyone else? Everybody? I'm this excited. Is, I'm this, is, this is gonna go into the consent item. Right. On me. This, this will be a. This has been years since I had this will be, hands on me. This will be. This will be a. This will be a consent agenda. Yes. Item. So if you guys can. We can. We consent. We do consent. To the blocking yes. of the road, if that could be added to the can, and Mr. Gassi will follow up with the. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate right. you. Next mm -hmm. item will be the three maintenance on thirty-seven twelve Chevrolet Street. Um, forward. As you know, we've had a number of different trees that are failing, dying, what have you. Um, one particular resident who lives at 5712, Taylor, has asked for the town to trim this tree. Um, the tree trimming, not removal, just trimming. Um, apparently some of the branches are falling on their home and things of that nature. We've done this on Cedarcroft. We did this at 4409 um, 40th. Um, the amount was $550 just to trim the tree so that the limbs will no longer fall on their roof. They're very concerned about that. Um, and that's it. I'm sorry, Mr. Gaston. Sure. 57 or 37? I'm sorry. It is 3712 Shepherd Street. I apologize. 3712. And it's the town owned tree yes it's in the tree box it's street curb tree box the tree sits in the tree box then sidewalk then their property and that's extending over their house correct the tree <laughs> limbs are reaching over their home and because the tree is old oh and, yeah. right i yeah. see it you see it now? okay, okay. yeah that's the one um i just have a comment it's one of those locust trees i would like to find which tree committee planted all those locust trees like 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. I can I tell them, I, it wasn't you, you weren't on the tree committee 40 years ago, but if you're out there, nah, uh, yeah. And they were still doing it like not 40 years ago. <laughs> locust trees like, are like, for a, they just, yeah, a replanting trees. plan. Um, so this is my experience, that if the tree overhangs your property, that's your problem. We've done it for other residents. 
see. I, I, that's why we... Well, I think, I think if, you know, if my neighbor's tree is over the fence onto my property, I have the right to cut it at the mm -hmm. fence line. However, if my neighbor's tree falls on my house, it's their problem, not mine. Well, actually, if you talk to the insurance oh, person... Oh, you're right. The insurance might say differently. She will like, you're right. no, you were you're supposed right. to send a letter, certified letter to your neighbor stating that that tree is going to fall on my head. So then the insurance might consider. But mm -hmm. if that tree is under you, house insurance. Mm -hmm. Even if though it's your neighbor's tree. And I learned that. I hear you. I think I still think it's being. I think I would still stick with what we said before, which is just that we're being good neighbors by taking care of the trees that we put in front of their property. Do you know what I mean? Like the five hundred dollars is worth it. You know. And, so. and let me be clear: these are town trees. These right, aren't trees it. on private property. Right. It's so there the are, an, and let me. This has been raised by some residents. Apparently, the town planted a number of those trees yeah. that the ones that you just said yeah, the locust trees the locust tree but they didn't plant them on town property they planted them on private property and so they've died and so a number of residents have said the town planted the tree i said unfortunately it's not on our property yeah unless there's documentation for it yeah. unless they have document even if they did it still would be true can i introduce a, a an idea suggestion that um that yes, we say yes to the to helping of the neighbor for this tree, but that the tree committee take this away and maybe that that the tree the future tree committee people, which hopefully will come on the day of Saturday, June seventeenth, for the green team tree committee meeting, that the tree people actually um, come back and propose to the council a way to address this kind of a question. Is it mm. all or nothing? Is it sometimes? What are the what is the criteria for yeah. whether or not the town helps? Is it financial and, hardship? And is it elderly? Is it everybody? Is it nobody? It's a prime example, my neighbor. Mm -hmm. That tree, they have proof that the town planted the tree. But when the tree grow, it took their um, land. So it didn't grow out to the uh, town, uh, it grew into their property. So now the tree is probably 50 years old and those branches last, last I, I think yeah, a, a, month, a, a, month ago, a month ago, a month ago, yes. And they lost two, two vehicles through that and they've been asking if we can cut at least the branch that is overhang their roof that we recently approved through ARPA funding. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you. there are, that's why I say, if we're gonna pick and choose, I mean, they've been, that, they've that, been 65 years in that property and uh, they're asking for. Yeah, that tree's been there a long time. A long time, so. So, um, I, I'm hoping that we'll prove this, put it on consent for next meeting so I can go ahead and get this done. Um, and in regards to the tree committee, I would strongly recommend that because unfortunately there are a number of those trees that the town planted mm -hmm. and they planted them on private property mm -hmm. and now they become a tremendous burden on the residents and the resident thinks that it's our problem and in reality it's not. Sure. And this resident is different than you, the resident that you're speaking of, Mayor. Correct. Um, and maybe that resident should also contact and consider asking for that at this perfect juncture right now as well then. If it's the resident, I think it is. It is. They've already asked and we've done a trim to that tree, but the tree is so big, a tree actually needs to be removed. Um, but unfortunately, the majority of the tree is on private property. Mm. So again, that's, we're going again, back, like right. planted. So, mm -hmm. I, well, like I said, that's a... Planted the tree on, tree on private property, would we not have needed consent in order to do so? You would expect it that. started on public. But I mean, no, this it is started an oak on tree. It's got to be like 65, 70 yes. years old. I mean, that's why I old said it's, it's an old tree. I mean, yes. Like, it, it, are we talking and about. And again, if you plant a little tree and the thing yeah. grows. Right. Are we talking about the gentleman to the left of you? Yes. Yes. It's on his property. I no, it is. I mean, that's exactly what I said because yeah, this no. tree, mm -hmm. I mean, we plant those trees, yeah. but then, you know, it's not their fault that the tree grow into there. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the reason why we don't have sidewalk in that side because we have that huge tree. And is the answer in the interim that we do it for people once as much as we mm -hmm. Well, in this particular case, we so trim. We did it for that person, and so we're offering <coughs> to do it for this person once. Well, no, this particular per this tree is on public property. The one okay. that. Yeah, this tree on Shepherd Street. three on Shepherd Street. Mm -hmm. The tree that she's referring to, we did trim some limbs off of it, even though it was on private property. But the tree still stands. Yeah. I so think we have an obligation. So, then so on Saturday, an, an agenda item for you to recommend to us how do we move forward with town planted trees that are on private property? Heard. Hi. Right. This goes to the consent. Yay or nay? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's consented. Uh, all right, Mr. Gaston. Thank right. you. Invoice for art magnet repair. Councilmember Monroe. Mm -hmm. This is the box. <laughs> this was for you to go over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's 906. I'm losing all decorum. I'm getting boisterous. I like it. Oh. Just don't that. get unruly and you'll be <laughs> okay. Don't get unruly. <laughs> we if we Mac is the cuffs. These old out. school words. <laughs> if Mac can share my screen. As you know, the town went into an agreement with the Operations Art Foundation Incorporated to install the box, which is at the far end of Bartlett Park. Unfortunately, there have been two or three, Council Member Leggett, help me. At least two. At least two vandalisms to the box. As of right now, there is absolutely nothing in the box. It is empty, and they're proposing that the box be moved right outside this door next to town hall so that we can quote unquote keep a better eye on it luckily for us we have a fantastic police department and they've installed cameras that are right next to this door that <coughs> installation removal and reinstallation will cost two thousand dollars in addition to the additional funds that were already paid to build the first one they will remove the box and then they will bring it up to the door right here right outside of town hall and install it for a grand total of two thousand dollars any ask a question? sure may I, may I ask a question could our public works department move it mm -hmm. this was discussed ad nauseum Is that a violation of our agreement? it's a violation of the agreement well hang tight so the agreement was that they would provide sort of routine maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and anything that we did to, to, so the, to add to it would make it null and void. Correct. And Without then the, the, the one thing that wasn't correct. covered was vandalism. Well, right. right. It doesn't include vandalism. Yeah, it vandalism. And then the separate part of that contract is resupplying the arts. Right. right? So it's sort of like two parts of the same contract. So what I so I just looked it up. The last time we had vandalism, we spent five hundred dollars to repair it, mm -hmm. and this is two two thousand. That includes repairs and moving. And then what was our original cost for the thing? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. So part of that was half. We we agreed up to twelve, but we ended up doing I believe only ten. Okay. And part of that fee was to go to the local artist that did the design because we wanted to make sure the artists get paid. Which is lovely. Them. Yeah. I I think though. Um, what I would suggest is that we take care of the maintenance and the moving, moving forward, and then they can take care of the replying or resupplying of the of the art art supplies. That's a good idea. I need to have our town attorney review the agreement because I'm not sure it, it would it have. It says to, only one year here. It would that have, year, that was planned. When was that? It would um, have to be. Happened. It would have to be Someone changed. It would be getting the Halloween. That's right. Mm -hmm. Halloween. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm sorry. Wait a second. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the contract is for one year. Correct. Which means the contract is up in five it. months, six months, something like that. Something like that. Four five and a half. Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Let's just move it. Yeah. Let's just move it. it which I part of me was like, can we just go and negotiate? I'm just looking for consent here to move forward with like, hey guys, okay, and hey you all, I shouldn't say guys, I'm sorry. Guys is kind of generous. It's the southern coming out of me, but hey y'all, 
can we simply just handle the maintenance of it? Because part of it, I think they don't understand the constraints of a small town budget. So I think they send these things thinking maybe larger city money. budgets, yeah. right? And larger cities may can just eat that and not think about it. And Fisher yeah. can move it in two hours. Correct. So I'd rather have that because I think they'd be very amenable to a discussion around it if I had it. If I had it, yeah, yeah that's about. Just just have it with them mm-hmm. and just give them an opportunity just to hear us out because mm-hmm. we can't continue to eat that cost. Right. Um, and that we do want to just. What I want to try to figure out is how to get us back focused on the programming part, which is what brought the mayor and I to and you know to the idea of using this. And the mayor was like, "Hey, let's bring us to the town. Love the idea. Bring you guys over, right? Or you all? Sorry, I keep saying guys, y'all over." Now, that's just my ask. Look, I, I agree. I don't think the two thousand. I don't think we should foot that. I think it should go to public work. But I'd rather just give them the opportunity to have a conversation around what we're trying to do, and again, bring it back to programming because the vandalism. And the fees for maintenance is kind of taking up the space. If I, I if I may, they have done one session with the, the Girl Scout troop. Mm-hmm. They yeah. did do one session with the Girl Scout. Right, and I want to just bring that top of mind. Like, can we just eat the cost for this? And we're looking to partner with you all in a lot of more, a lot more opportunities for which you know, uh, you want to share the intern ship opportunity yeah. as well. Yeah, there was um, a young person at Brentwood Day who is looking for community service hours, and her main or their main interest is um, uh, art and social media. And so that's a great opportunity to get some community service hours through some kind of programming around this little free art box or whatever. Yeah, I don't think that this person could move the box for us, but <coughs> no, 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 just just the Engage the actual it. event. But, uh, I mean, I'll repair. I mean, how long might that take to do that crafting? I mean, well, I, actually, if you look at the invoice, which hopefully Matt can share, the door replacement is three hundred dollar. The LED lights is two hundred. The actual <coughs> majority of the cost is to deinstall and reinstall and transport. That's a thousand dollars. But then they have the five hundred dollar line. That says supplies. And I'm just like. Oh, you're talking about materials? Materials. Correct. Like, like give me some line items as to where you get $500 worth of materials. I, like I said. Um, just, just the whole thing just stinks. Um, so, I mean, I, I think <laughs> to Council Member Monroe's part, let's focus on the programming. Let's have Public Works do the, do the repairs. Mm-hmm. And, and that's it. Yeah, you know? Yeah, There's more to it. If I may, just because I don't remember. In the contract, did it say how regularly they would be engaging with the community mm-hmm. through arts programming? I have to pull it back up. They um, were supposed to do, um, I'm, I'm trying to look this fine print right here. And when we first engaged with them, they were telling us there will be a different engagement groups, mm-hmm. seniors, uh, having seen that mm-hmm. happening. Uh, with the juice, we did it once. Mm. That was uh, uh, around. That's all. Mm, only one time so how that I remember. Which, uh, twice the, with the girls. It, uh, it, with the girls. Girl girl but, but that was not, not the. That's not what they told us when we <coughs> first were presented with the project. I feel like it was almost like monthly. We should monthly, be doing something. Monthly, yes. Then they will be doing some sort of engagement. So right. that none so of we, that. So we could maybe leverage that. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I in think, reference yeah. to. Yeah. There's two stacks that they want. Not and if stacks. We, did you go there? I did. <laughs> okay. I did. This is what you get after nine o'clock. <laughs> um, and if not, I just recommend that we have our guys move it. I, I definitely recommend our guys move it no matter what. And this is going to, I love the arts all, everybody knows it, but I think the cost is too high for our town to eat, just moving the, moving the, the, the box itself. So I will want to ask them, can, what can we do to make this happen? Public Sports takes care of it, and we line up a series of events over the next few months, like, and that's the the discussion. So if I may, you're going to take the lead with this conversation about this invoice? Yeah, I can can be on it. Can can you at least give us the opportunity to see if we can fix it? Yeah, I mean, we we are going to fix it. uh, I mean, not remove it, like, from there. 
Because you said remove that. Oh. Well, so the remove <coughs> was because the, the camera. Oh, we were, move it to the. Oh, okay. Right right I was like, I was thinking permanently um, remove yeah. that. Okay, okay. No, oh. it would literally be right here. So okay. that the camera. Okay. Is. It's so in the camera. Cameras. Excellent idea. And so that yeah. way, hopefully, it won't be vandalized anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now in that yeah. part, it's a it's a tough one. I, I like the location near the playground, but I do like it being closer in because during events, it's easier to do things around the box, like doing mm -hmm. town days and, and et cetera. So I think the new location will be nice for that reason. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Okay. Right. So we're not paying $2,000. That's what well, we're saying right here. So, all right. I, so I don't want we, to talk about <laughs> Put the ball on you and then like you just roll with it. Uh, just one more <laughs> okay. question while we're talking about the, the box. It's open all the time, correct? Do we want to consider it not being open all the time? No. I, I would advise against it only because people like to break into the darn thing. So you think that we should put some yeah. sort of lock on it? No it's lock. It's free. No lock. It's a no free lock. gallery. Yeah. It's actually yeah. art that people went in and destroyed it and took the art stuff. That yeah. is an act of art even. You know, like I'm not saying vandalism is, but going in and being like, oh, you know, it's a free thing. So when you put something free out there, it's like this is I'm not public. saying we should leave it locked at all yeah. times. I'm saying should we consider I that. think about when I lived in Baltimore and I would leave my car unlocked at night because I would rather you rifle through my car than break my window to get in. So it's the, sort of the same idea with this box. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think they'd really like mess it up to get whatever's if inside locked. if it was locked. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Once this I, look, year is up, are we going to yeah, be responsible for up, uh, re-upping on the art supplies? Yeah, and even that part, we can get partnerships with like art local part yeah so I, we have plenty yeah. of pathways forward to you know um mm -hmm. even with pto yeah, yeah, yeah. artworks the arts exchange mm -hmm. uh across mm -hmm. the street so that the supplies itself i'm not too worried about um i think it's just kind of getting with this 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 hurdle of like the, the maintenance and the invoices you know, just to scrap that this part of the discussion mm -hmm. all right Good. Can we move to the next item? That will be Councilmember Monroe. The update on the op the three for the Gateway CDC. Yeah. So this well, Mayor Mayor and I will be. So the meeting was, and this probably does, this is going to be really short. The meeting was supposed to be last week. It got moved to tomorrow morning at nine a.m. So we'll have more information to share really at the next meeting. But we request the short versions. We met uh, two, no, three weeks ago. And um, it was a productive meeting between the mayors and then the, the board, the board members that are council members from each town. And the goal was to sort of just talk about what the last concerns were and request documentation. And so that information was provided. And I guess I can just I can forward around that same email to everybody so they can have it. But you know, like the financial the last compilation document, like financial statements, um, the bylaws were asked for just sort of clarifying deliverables and some additional information and so that was put together and then we'll discuss it so after the meeting depending on how that goes we can um, if that collection information is fine I would want to then share it with the respective towns um, and again for full context because I'm jumping right into this topic without explaining what operational support is just rehash it is um, the three towns agreeing to three years of operational support for Gateway CDC. Mm -hmm. And for our part, we agreed to use ARPA funds to do um, our amount, and Mount Rainey committed to their amount, and then North Brentwood committed to their amount on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So they didn't commit technically to the full three years, but they just want to be able to revisit it each year. But each town is now officially passing a, a motion and agree to fund um, help support organization uh, with some guardrails obviously um, to it and so the idea is that we would do these meetings to get to a, a, a consensus on how to move forward and so that's where we're at right now so this meeting tomorrow should be the last meeting and then we can come back to our respective municipalities with that report out um, with the intent on funding then starting to be provided as early as July because of fiscal 
yeah. fiscal year. Yeah. Um, the, what we discussed was that we're not going to give out the lump sum, the 75 up front. We're actually going to do 25. Well, in our part, per year. Per year, yes. Right. And Mount Rainier will do their 50000 per year. And right. we're only going to release that money once we have the MOU and the tangibles and all that stuff yes. delivered. So I, I don't, yeah. we're not going to be releasing the money July 1st unless we have I all mean, that stuff. I mean, we, we actually uh, received some of the items that we requested. Right. They emailed it to us. I mean, I guess at this point mm -hmm. we can just share those items yeah. and then um, we uh, finalize in the next meeting we actually, you know, because it was uh, a motion that we did before. Well, we did, but it was contingent Contentious on, to don't. So which that, means no money should be released until exactly. that's Exactly. So that the paperwork yeah. is going to be uh, sent to you guys, and then we, on the next meeting, we're going to bring back what the final discussion was. So. Right. <clears throat> so. But it, it seems like we all uh, were in the same page. It's great that all the towns are, like, talking. You know what I mean? Like we at the are. same table about yes. that. Yes. Yeah, we ha uh, have it's to say that before yeah. meeting with the whole group, <laughs> Mayor Robinson and Mayor Benitez, we met prior because, you know, they want to make sure that we are asking the same things, although mm. we were trying to see if North Brain would want to do so more, but they said right now this is what I'm committing. Uh, they're going to review their budget for the next times. <coughs> That's it. Uh, and that's fair, you know. I, I think it, went, uh, uh, it was a very uh, good meeting. And we should see what the results will be. All right, so the next item, when I found the agenda. League of Women Voters. League of Women Voters. Of, um, this was brought by uh, Councilmember Rauch of uh, attending the, uh, the breakfast. It's, uh, it's this Saturday. Just let me know who wants to attend to support. I'm not available. I'm me either. I'm out of town. <laughs> what I already you RSVP'd. Did, no. Did, did uh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask if anybody could attend. I just told the person from, See the <laughs> from League of, I just told her in the email. I said, I love <coughs> League of Women Voters, um, and this is great, and we'll work together in the future. But I, it would, could just go into the event announcement. It's not a request that anybody formally attend. OK. Yeah, so done. Good. Done. Done, done. Yep. It's on June 10th at 10 a.m. Woodmere Country Club if anybody's interested in the town. Thank you. Love the League of Women Voters. Yes. There we go. Uh, what matter better bus plan, letter of support? Um, so that's me. I'll jump in. Um, if, for context, WAMADA is going through a better bus initiative. Um, and the key point is that they're overhauling the entire bus network with the idea that we would get more frequency. Um, and so the key key slide here is like what would create broad changes to WMATA bus service. They're adding a high frequency service across the region and also adding a night service. And then, um, and this, this PowerPoint we can provide and upload, but it's also just basically taking slides from their presentation. Um, and how it impacts us is that it's improving um, the Rhode Island Avenue corridor service. Um, primarily the hub is down in Mount Rainier, but we all get impacted by this. And so as you go through, you'll see that, you know, the DC 114, the DC 210, uh, the DC 210 is, if you've ever taken the G8 before, it's replacing that. Um, the MD 146, this used to be mine, this is replacing the T14 and T18, T18, the T14 and T18. That runs down 38. Correct. So it picks up over there by the, you know, the uh, fire station, comes around the corner there. And then the MD2. Are they going to change those? So, the, so they're increasing. So they're changing oh, the names. Increasing the, okay. Yeah, increasing them and changing the names. So instead of it being a T14, you, now you're going to be looking for an MD146. Oh my God, there needs to be tell people that way. Because yeah, I, I have to be honest, yeah. I don't know. I only know 83 and 86. That's well, all the. <laughs> so the MD2, so for you then, the MD249 replaces the 80s. So I used to take the 83 and 86. Mm -hmm. We're looking for MD249. So now it's going to be MD. Right. What? 49? MD, MD 249. 249. Um, and people who take the bus will get this information mm -hmm. on Correct. the bus and, and at the metro station. Right. And to be clear, this is at the second point of public feedback. There's another third iteration of public feedback. And so what I'm tr trying to, uh, and what a lot of us in the municipalities are doing is just asking for letters of support to go in. 
um, and we can keep repeating this. We should probably should put this in the, the newsletter as well next month. Maybe in the newsletter month. we should put that in there because my aunt will know. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually yeah. every day. So when I started working for the town, I would take the 80s. That's why uh, six, 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 well done. Right. to come to work. Mm-hmm. And um, outside of rush hour, that bus only runs once per hour. So mm-hmm. now, for, for example, so that's a good question. So now running every 20 minutes, that's going to be really good for people who have to take public transportation going in either direction. Exactly. Because yeah. two, so MD 249 and 250, if you'll see, they overlap a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so that's why you only be getting like 15 minutes, 20 minutes now mm-hmm. as opposed to that hour. And I trust me, I, I felt the pain on that one too. Yeah, um, man. So what's the, sort of the devil's in the details on this? Um, the proposed network is 35% more expensive than the current budgeted WMATA bus network. So there needs to be figured out like how the, the area governments are gonna figure out the funding on that. Um, the F1 and F2 are removed. Previously, that was a north to south service. Okay. And that's mostly downtown Mayrania and Brentwood. Um, uh, but you know, for the most part, it's a win-win. So what we're- Is that we're the Chevrolet line? Oh, sh- I can't remember I that like one. The, the F1 and F2. I have to look at it. I can't remember which one that one mm-hmm. goes down. Um, but basically, we're looking for a letter of support that just generally um, supports the effort to change the service and, and increase it. Um, and what is the current? I'm sorry. Yeah. And so that last page about from proposed MNC Mayor and Council letter to WMATA board mm-hmm. captures a con- content. And, I, and again, I got this from Council Member. Stoltz was who I appreciate it. He kind of put, he took some of the content from WMATA's PowerPoint and kind of whittled it down into these key points, which I completely agree with, is that, you know, write in broad support of the changes in service increases. Talk specifically about service <coughs> impacts that have a strong equity benefit. So for us, we're connecting now to West Highsville Metro a little bit better and the continued benefits along the Rhode Island Avenue corridor with the increased service being sped up. Um, speaking to the need to moderate rail fares if forcing transfers, and speak to the need to maintain promised service levels if forcing transfers. The forcing transfers is still a topic of discussion, basically. So I think we need to pay attention on that one on the next iteration, because I don't know how that's technically going to get resolved. Um, and like I said, I'll look at the, I forgot what the date is on the next round of community feedback, feedback but that's an opportunity to um, check that out at that time. So just looking for consent to move forward with that, and then I can type up a letter of support, and we can vote on it at the next meeting to officially yeah. go from the mayor. You have language for that letter? I do. I have a version of it that I was already working on for PGCMA, okay. and so we can just use the oh, same, perfect. same thing. I say yes. 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 I say yes. yes. How long has it been since they've done something like this? I'm sure it's long overdue. Long yeah. overdue. Long overdue. Yeah. That's correct. All right. So nothing else on that one? I will move to, my God, we only have three more minutes. 2023 Council Retreat Day and Location. You have three minutes. Okay. <laughs> when are folks out of town? Can we start there? What was, remember, remind me, what was the issue? Were we, were we not, we were first proposing to tack it, tack it on after the MML. So the, the, well, not even after it ends, but like just eating into the last, maybe little bit portions of it that right. we didn't need to it attend. Ends on, it ends on a Wednesday, so we're yeah. going to meet Wednesday so afternoon. Like, you had to hit the road. <coughs> so you could I can jump on virtual. virtual, yeah. What did you, you had something to do that day? I have to go back to work. You have to go back to work in the afternoon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because oh. I'm, I'm not planning oh. to drive at night after that dinner thing. And your, your son. But, yeah, and then I have to bring <laughs> my kid back. Uh, <laughs> so, so you're leaving Tuesday? Uh, that was the plan, to leave Tuesday night, but... I uh, might drive in the morning instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the day. That so, I mean, we could also push it back to July. That's birthday month. I know that. But, I mean, do we have any time in July? But will there be red velvet cake? <laughs> yes. Yes, there will be. If that's what it takes. If that's what it takes. Right. We can hire massage, chair massage. And cake? Always cake. Holy moly. Right, Always cake. Do people have availability in July? Gifts? Yep. Uh, I do. Mm-hmm. I do. Well, July is wide open for me. July, the last week of July and the first one in August, I'll be 
mm-hmm. out and about. Okay, so how about the eighth? So I love the eighth. eighth. July. Yeah, yep. sounds like a plan. That's your birthday? The day after my birthday is July seventh. Yeah. We'll bring you lots of coffee for your hangover. That's when we did it last year. The day after July eighth last time. Oh, it's the day after your birthday. It's the fifteenth. Oh, fifteenth is good for me too, and that thing gives. Yeah, I birthday girl, exactly. No one wants to get up the night after their game. Yeah, and is, is good. something from wrong what time 15th. to what time? I would prefer the morning, not too early, of course. So like nine. Ten, so I, oh, I think ten. it was the attorney couldn't make the fifteenth. Uh, and I don't know if he can make the eighth either. Ah, uh, see, that's okay. the problem. Let's keep going. That's no problem. Twenty second. Mm-hmm. You're gone. Oh, the, I'm leaving the twenty first. He's even. It is in my calendar. I don't know where I'm going, but they told me that I'm leaving. Is everybody going to town for July 4th weekend? The first? July 1st. July 1st is what day of the week? It's It's a Saturday. Saturday. It's a Saturday. Saturday. That's when we're coming back from MML. That week. Oh, the other week. Yes. We are coming back that week. It could be very patriotic. We'll be fresh with ideas. I'm fine. Before July 4th. That's July 4th weekend. Yes, but but it will be very patriotic. I'll be here. For us to do it. Oh, you want me to go? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, it'll be Friday afternoon. Yeah, I'm probably going to be asking for oh, that the third, Monday. The 30th, Friday afternoon, sure. Work a half day, come into the retreat. The 30th? So, not to brag, but I will actually be singing at the Pentagon on June the 30th, so I will not be available. <laughs> yeah! Who's? Wow. Me Make at sure the Pentagon. you get video so uh, Matt can pass that in the channel 71. <laughs> so I will, can we, can we I will most likely not be available, but we could do that evening if people are free. Well, no, because it might run late. Never mind. I don't Disregard know. that. I'm only here because of me neither. Apparently, pizza. Um, <laughs> can we do Friday evening the 14th? Hmm? July. Uh huh. Like a not not evening. I'm sorry. Afternoon. Like, if, could we work all work a half day at our normal jobs? Yeah. On the fourteenth, and That's then come into our council retreat. Say it like two o'clock. Lunch. <laughs> like after lunch. Lunch. Will be provided. That probably will work for me. Somebody call Mr. Attorney Deloach right now. We might have found a date and a time. Mr. Gassing, would you be? I don't think available? he's available. I'm sure you. I'm not sure you would. What, what date is this? On the fourteenth. Right. July fourteenth. Will you be in the office on that July day? July fourteenth. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. I will be out of Kansas. Because honestly, if everyone in this room can be here mm-hmm. and the lawyer can't, I'd consider it a win. A win. Well, we really need him. For well, what? Some of the issues. Some of the issues are. Well, like the election stuff. Yeah. Lawyer, a lot of them are lawyer related. But I don't want that. To, I don't, I don't want to. This might be our opportunity. Let's just mm-hmm. you know? so so Let's put yes. it as a first, and then can we pick a second? Because if he's like, no, I can't do that, then let's okay. try to pick a second. <laughs> Like the 13th. Miranda, I hope you're writing this down so I'm not going to remember this. Back back so the 15th, you said July 14th? Yes, sir. Who's Starting not going to be PM. here on the 15th? I think the attorney. The attorney. So if he's not going to be on the 15th, and probably he's going to be one? out on the 14th. Okay. Okay. So so the might take going? Going? Is the next one the 15th? I mean, no, because him. the attorney's gone. He's not here. He's not available. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I are you out? You said you're out on the 21st. I am out on the 21st. What about you're a Thursday? You're out the 21st. Half day. Mm. I mean, just Thursday half day is fine for me. Yeah. yeah Thursday before two, yeah, I can make. What like day? Like the 20th Thursday, you mean? I can't do that day. Wednesday, the 19th, half day. Mm, no. Mm-mm-mm. I'm sorry. I facilitate classes for seniors, and oh, I nice. have stuff both of those days, Wednesday and Thursday. What's going to happen apologize. when you win the lottery? You don't have a backup? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll still facilitate classes for seniors at high school. <laughs> I actually really like them. That's awesome. So That's I so would nice still do that. That's so nice to hear. And Mayor, you're leaving on the 21st through when? August 5th. August 5th. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, then, like, I mean, I don't <coughs> mind. Let's look at, like, August as our, like, Why second not the two. 7th? Why not the 7th of July? Half day? Why not the seventh? I think Mr. Oh, that's Gaston's your birthday. Right. That's your birthday. And okay. Mr. Gaston's out of the office. Yeah. Too. Okay. Okay. Well, that's you guys so look at that calendar. I just want to make an announcement. Oh, Monday. We, we have one. We have one. We'll stick with one. 
Dear Mayor Trinidad Lopez, congratulations on receiving your 2023 Banner City Town Designation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Larry, Thank for taking you. care of that. Larry, because he was like, and the last, uh, that was the uh, last minute. No, so we, it well, it no, 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 because he was like <laughs> trying to get, for him being new, he was like, yes. Yeah. Sure. Thank yes. you. Trying to gather everything and he put it together. Yes. Yes. And thank you, Council, for doing your stuff. Council Member Monroe served as a chair, which helped us mm -hmm. to get some accreditation. Yes. What I do? What happened? Thank you, your chair. We are oh. Your no. chair for oh. our designation. Oh, legislative committee. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. Thanks for us. Yep. I'm right. chair I'm for, I'm, I'm not chair, I'm secretary, secretary, and we attended the meeting. So yeah, June 27 is going to be from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. We're going to be taking that nice picture. Oh, right. So you know. What is a, what's a banner city? It's an accreditation that we get through the Maryland Municipal League. That means there's a we're certain the amount of stuff. City? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But there's a certain amount of things yeah, you have to do to make sure you're engaged in your local right. um, mm -hmm. politics and auxiliary committees like PGCMA. So one one of the criteria is either council or staff yeah. has to serve on a committee. Yes. I'm mm -hmm. on the engagement and outreach committee. Yes. Yeah. He's chair of legislative committee and I did a lot for PGCMA. I mean, I'm secretary. Does, count, the, the mayor goes to the kids. And if I were mayor, oh, right. um, yeah. petition. So it's a number of different It's a things. number of things you have to do just to show that you engage with the community. That and we're participating in Maryland your politics colleagues. and thriving of children of Maryland. Yes. yes. That's great, guys. Good job. <laughs> they are the future. Good job. So it was the only there. day. All right, so what day? Uh, Jason did not reply back. Oh, so we got two options. Good. Mayor, okay. are you doing guys, on a Saturday? Is he asking, are we doing it on a Saturday? And this. We're yeah. saying Friday I'm, the 14th. Friday the 14th. Friday the 14th at 2 p.m. But y'all, seriously, I can do the 8th right. if we leave the 8th. So just see if the 8th is. She's got him on the I think we worried Jason was going to Because I can gallivant later. <laughs> I love these old words, gallivanting. Don't be getting are, you, are you out of courting? Yes. Because mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. we really need to get this done. Yeah. The, there was an email about some kind of capital thing that Brentwood also won. A capital, capital grant agreement. That's our yes. bond. That's the bond yeah. bill. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. While well, waiting yeah. for um, yeah. Jason to reply back, and you figured I'm going to read the uh, events so we can just move. Yeah. This is the upcoming events: LGBTQ Plus Pride Day potluck is Tuesday, June 13 at 6 p.m. Family Movie Night is on Wednesday, June 14, 2023, at 8.15 p.m. Green Tree Committee kickoff Saturday, that's June 17, at 9 a.m. Juneteenth, Monday, June 19, is Town Hall and Public Works closed, and there is a celebration scheduled at 12 p.m. at the Wyndham Road. I think Barrier. that's 11 o'clock, actually, Mr. Gaston, and it says p.m., not a.m. 11? Okay. It's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. To 2 p.m. Thank you for that correction. And then we are heading to MML conference yeah. from June 25th to the 27th. Independence Day is Tuesday, July 4th. Town Hall and Public Works are closed. If I may, Mayor, the Juneteenth event is going to be taking place at the Wyndham Road Barrier. Yes. Um, and there will be a panel discussion in reference to the Wyndham Road Historic Barrier Park project, which should be coming to a close this year, uh, which will be followed by a barbecue. So please come out. Yes, thank you. All right, Mr. Deloach respond, and he is not available from July 8th through the 16th. Okay, so that's your We're looking at August. We're looking at August. We'll discuss that. <laughs> Next meeting. That's right. All right. Can we I, just do a, a doodle poll? <laughs> can you just do that and then that way it'll, yeah. you know? And I've seen that before. Yeah. That yeah. is it's a violation of meetings. Thing. You're making a decision. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's can't true. do that. It's got to be in an open forum. Ne uh, table, and this is coming we'll back under not. That's right. In the next so meeting. Friday, July 14th is out. Is that yeah. And, yeah. and also yeah. added for the next mm -hmm. meeting, uh, the uh, summer's uh, recess. 
because that's, we have not discussed that, so but July. we have to, so. Are you recessing for July? Is, oh, is July the recess? That's the question. Is, that's the question. Oh. It's oh, coming we'll in the next August, meeting. We'll so please July. look right. at your uh, calendar, so that way we know. All right, I need a no, no motion to adjourn. It's, it's 9.42 p.m. I need to check. What are you going to check? A pu any public comments. Oh, thank you. Do um, you have a public comment? He's checking right I'm now. I'm checking right now. No public comments. And it is 9.42 p.m. We are adjourning the uh, work session of the mayor and council. Today is Tuesday, to June 6. Do we need a motion to work adjourn? Session? Mm -hmm. It's work session. Do we need a motion? Yeah. I move to adjourn the meeting of work session with the mayor and council at 9.42. Two. Four p.m. Tuesday, June 6. Thank you. Good night, Brian Wood. Good night. Good night. I say hi. Hi. We are.